The Introduction to the King James Version of the Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 11 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Leviticus, chapters 12 to 22. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, and born a man-child, then shall she be unclean seven days, according to the days of the separation, for her infirmity shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, and she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the sanctuary, until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. But if she bear a maid child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her separation. Then she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. And when the days of her purifying are fulfilled, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring a lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, and a young pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, unto the priest, who shall offer it before the Lord, and make an atonement for her and she shall be cleansed from the issue of her blood. This is the law for her that hath borne a male or a female, and if she be not able to bring a lamb, then she shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons, the one for the burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her, and she shall be clean. Chapter 13 and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh, like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priests. And the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him, and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of his flesh, and in sight be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up that hath the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him the seventh day, and, behold, if the plague in his sight be at a stay, and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more, and the priest shall look on him again the seventh day. And, behold, if the plague be somewhat dark, and the plague spread not in the skin, the priest shall pronounce him clean. It is but a scab, and he shall wash his clothes and be clean. But if the scab spread much abroad in the skin, after that he hath been seen of the priest for his cleansing, he shall be seen of the priest again. And if the priest see that, behold, the scab spreadeth in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a leprosy. When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him. And, behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising, it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague, from his head even to his foot, wheresoever the priest looketh, then the priest shall consider, and, behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. 
but when the raw flesh appeareth in him, he shall be unclean. And the priest shall see the raw flesh, and pronounce him to be unclean. For the raw flesh is unclean, it is a leprosy. For if the raw flesh turn again, and be changed unto white, he shall come unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and, behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. He is clean. The flesh also in which, even in the skin thereof, was a boil, and is healed, and in the place of the boil there be a white rising, or a bright spot, white and somewhat reddish, and it be shewed to the priest. And if, when the priest seeth it, behold, it be in sight, lower than the skin, and the hair thereof be turned white, the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague of leprosy broken out of the boil. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hairs therein, and if it be not lower than the skin, but it be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days. And if it spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a plague. But if the bright spot stay in his place, and spread not, it is a burning boil, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. Or if there be any flesh in the skin whereof there is a hot burning, and the quick flesh that burneth have a white bright spot, somewhat reddish or white, then the priest shall look upon it, and, behold, if the hair in the bright spot be turned white, and it be in sight deeper than the skin, it is a leprosy broken out of the burning, wherefore the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. But if the priest look on it, and behold, there be no white hair in the bright spot, and it be no lower than the other skin, but be somewhat dark, then the priest shall shut him up seven days, and the priest shall look upon him the seventh day. And if it be spread much abroad in the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is the plague of leprosy. And if the bright spot stay in his place, and spread not in the skin, but it be somewhat dark, it is a rising of the burning, and the priest shall pronounce him clean, for it is an inflammation of the burning. If a man or woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague, and, behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. And if the priest look on the plague of the skull, and behold, it be not in sight deeper than the skin, and that there is no black hair in it, then the priest shall shut him up that hath the plague of the skull seven days. And in the seventh day the priest shall look on the plague, and, behold, if the skull spread not, and there be in it no yellow hair, and the skull be not in sight deeper than the skin, he shall be shaven, but the skull shall he not shave. And the priest shall shut him up that hath the skull seven days more. And in the seventh day the priest shall look on the skull, and, behold, if the skull be not spread in the skin, nor be in sight deeper than the skin, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, and he shall wash his clothes, and be clean. But if the skull spread much in the skin, after his cleansing, then the priest shall look on him, and, behold, if the skull be spread in the skin, the priest shall not seek for yellow hair, he is unclean. But if the skull be in his sight at a stay, and that there is a black hair grown up therein, the skull is healed, he is clean, and the priest shall pronounce him clean. If a man also, or a woman, have in the skin of their flesh bright spots, even white bright spots, then the priest shall look, and, behold, if the bright spots in the skin of their flesh be darkish white, it is a freckled spot that groweth in the skin, he is clean. And the man whose hair is fallen off his head, he is bald, yet is he clean. And he that hath his hair fallen off from the part of his head toward his face, 
he is forehead bald, yet is he clean. And if there be in the bald head, or bald forehead, a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung up in his bald head, or his bald forehead. Then the priest shall look upon it, and behold, if the rising of the sore be white reddish in his bald head, or in his bald forehead, as the leprosy appeareth in the skin of the flesh, he is a leprous man, he is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare, and he shall put a covering upon his upper lip, and shall cry, Unclean! Unclean! All the days wherein the plague shall be in him shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone. The garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen garment, whether it be in the warp or woof, of linen or of woolen, whether in a skin or in anything made of skin. And if the plague be greenish or reddish in the garment, or in the skin, either in the warp or in the woof, or in anything of skin, it is a plague of leprosy, and it shall be shewed unto the priest. And the priest shall look upon the plague, and shut up it that hath the plague seven days. And he shall look on the plague on the seventh day. If the plague be spread in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in a skin, or in any work that is made of skin, the plague is a fretting leprosy. It is unclean. He shall therefore burn that garment, whether warp or woof, in woolen or in linen, or in any thing of skin wherein the plague is, for it is a fretting leprosy. It shall be burnt in the fire. And if the priest shall look, and, behold, the plague be not spread in the garment, either in the warp or in the woof, or in any thing of skin, then the priest shall command that they wash the thing wherein the plague is and he shall shut it up seven days more. And the priest shall look on the plague after that it is washed, and, behold, if the plague have not changed his color, and the plague be not spread, it is unclean. Thou shalt burn it in the fire. It is fret inward, whether it be bare within or without. And if the priest look, and, behold, the plague be somewhat dark after the washing of it, then he shall rend it out of the garment, or out of the skin, or out of the warp, or out of the woof. And if it appear still in the garment, either in the warp, or in the woof, or in any thing of skin, it is a spreading plague. Thou shalt burn that wherein the plague is with fire. And the garment, either warp, or woof, or whatsoever thing of skin it be, which thou shalt wash. If the plague be departed from them, then it shall be washed the second time, and shall be clean. This is the law of the plague of leprosy, in a garment of woolen or linen, either in the warp or woof, or any thing of skins, to pronounce it clean, or to pronounce it unclean. Chapter 14 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and, behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed two birds, alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. As for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them, and the living bird, in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, and shave off all his hair, and wash himself in water, 
that he may be clean, and after that he shall come into the camp, and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. But it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head, and his beard, and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off, and he shall wash his clothes, also he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenth deals of fine flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and one log of oil. And the priest that maketh him clean shall present the man that is to be made clean, and those things, before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the priest shall take one he lamb, and offer him for a trespass offering, and the log of oil, and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering, and the burnt offering, in the holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest's, so is the trespass offering. It is most holy. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil, and pour it into the palm of his own left hand, and the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And of the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood of the trespass offering. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall pour upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, and the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. And the priest shall offer the sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, that is to be cleansed from his uncleanness, and afterward he shall kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering, and the meat offering upon the altar, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, and he shall be clean. And if he be poor, and cannot get so much, then he shall take one lamb for a trespass offering, to be waved, to make an atonement for him, and one-tenth deal of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering, and a log of oil, and two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, such as he is able to get, and the one shall be a sin offering, and the other a burnt offering. And he shall bring them on the eighth day for his cleansing unto the priest, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, before the Lord, and the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering, and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall pour of the oil into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, to make an atonement for him before the Lord. And he shall offer the one of the turtle doves, or of the young pigeons, such as he can get, even such as he is able to get, the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, with the meat offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed before the Lord. This is the law of him in whom is the plague of leprosy, whose hand is not able to get that which pertaineth to his cleansing. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I will give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house before the priest go into it to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean. And afterward the priest shall go in to see the house. And he shall look on the plague, and, behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house with hollow streaks, greenish or reddish, which in sight are lower than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house, and shut up the house seven days. And the priest shall come again the seventh day, and shall look. And, behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is, and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. And they shall take the other stones and put them in the place of those stones, and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. And if the plague come again and break out in the house, after that he hath taken away the stones, and after he hath scraped the house, and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look, and, behold, if the plague be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house, it is unclean, and he shall break down the house, the stones of it, and the timber thereof, and all the mortar of the house, and he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. Moreover, he that goeth into the house all the while that it is shut up shall be unclean until the even. And he that lieth in the house shall wash his clothes, and he that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. And if the priest shall come in and look upon it, and, behold, the plague hath not spread in the house, after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, because the plague is healed. And he shall take care to cleanse the house two birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And he shall kill the one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. And he shall take the cedar wood, and the hyssop, and the scarlet, and the living bird, and dip them in the blood of the slain bird, and in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. And he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the running water, and with the living bird, and with the cedar wood, and with the hyssop, and with the scarlet. But he shall let go the living bird out of the city, into the open fields, and make an atonement for the house. And it shall be clean. This is the law for all manner of plague, of leprosy, and skull and for the leprosy of a garment, and of a house, and for a rising, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean, and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. Chapter 15 And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue he is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue, or his flesh be stopped from his issue. It is his uncleanness. Every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue is unclean, and every thing whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. And whosoever toucheth his bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean, until the even. 
and he that sitteth on any thing whereon he sat that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and he that toucheth the flesh of him that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and if he that hath the issue spit upon him that is clean then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and what saddle soever he rideth upon that hath the issue shall be unclean and whosoever toucheth any thing that was under him shall be unclean until the even and he that beareth any of those things shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and whomsoever he toucheth that hath the issue and hath not rinsed his hands in water he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and the vessel of earth that he toucheth which hath the issue shall be broken and every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water and when he that hath an issue is cleansed of his issue then he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing and wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in running water and shall be clean and on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves or two young pigeons and come before the lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and give them unto the priest and the priest shall offer them the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and the priest shall make an atonement for him before the lord for his issue and if any man's seed of copulation go out from him then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even and every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even the woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even and if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood she shall be put apart seven days and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even and every thing that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean every thing also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean and whosoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and whosoever toucheth any thing that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even and if it be on her bed or on any thing whereon she sitteth when he toucheth it he shall be unclean until the even and if any man lie with her at all and her flowers be upon him he shall be unclean seven days and all the bed whereon he lieth shall be unclean and if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation or if it run beyond the time of her separation all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation she shall be unclean every bed whereon she lieth all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of her separation and whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her separation and whosoever toucheth those things shall be unclean and shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even but if she be cleansed of her issue then she shall number to herself seven days and after that she shall be clean and on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtles or two young pigeons and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and the priest shall make an atonement for her before the lord for the issue of her uncleanness thus shall ye separate the children of israel from their uncleanness that they die not in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them 
this is the law of him that hath an issue, and of him whose seed goeth from him, and is defiled therewith, and of her that is sick of her flowers, and of him that hath an issue, of the man, and of the woman, and of him that lieth with her, that is unclean. Chapter 16 and the Lord spake unto Moses, after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord, and died. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place, within the veil, before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud, upon the mercy seat, Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place, with a young bullock for a sin offering, and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with a linen girdle, and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore he shall wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord, to make an atonement with him, and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself, and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer, full of burning coals of fire, from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands, full of sweet incense, beaten small, and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, that he die not. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering, that is, for the people, and bring his blood within the veil, and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat, and he shall make an atonement for the holy place, because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel, and because of their transgressions in all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation, that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make an atonement in the holy place, until he come out, and have made an atonement for himself, and for his household, and for all the congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord, and make an atonement for it, and shall take of the blood of the bullock, and the blood of the goat, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times, and cleanse it, and hallow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end of reconciling the holy place, and the tabernacle of the congregation, and the altar, he shall bring the live goat, and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat, and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, 
and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness and the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities unto a land not inhabited and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness and aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and shall put off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place and shall leave them there and he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people and the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar and he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp and the bullock for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place shall one carry forth without the camp and they shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their tongue and he that burneth them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp and this shall be a statute for ever unto you that in the seventh month on the tenth day of the month ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before the lord it shall be a sabbath of rest unto you and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute for ever and the priest whom he shall anoint in whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead shall make the atonement and shall put on the linen clothes even the holy garments and he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation and this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of israel for all their sins once a year and he did as the lord commanded moses chapter seventeen and the lord spake unto moses saying speak unto aaron and unto his sons and unto all the children of israel and say unto them this is the thing which the lord hath commanded saying what man soever there be of the house of israel that killeth an ox or lamb or goat in the camp or that killeth it out of the camp and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer an offering unto the lord before the tabernacle of the lord blood shall be imputed unto that man he hath shed blood and that man shall be cut off from among his people to the end that the children of israel may bring their sacrifices which they offer in the open field even that they may bring them unto the lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation unto the priests and to offer them for peace offerings unto the lord and the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and burn the fat for a sweet savour unto the lord and they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring this shall be a statute for ever unto them throughout their generations and thou shalt say unto them whatsoever man there be of the house of israel or of the strangers which sojourn among you that offereth a burnt offering or a sacrifice and bringeth it not unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation to offer it unto the lord even that man shall be cut off from among his people and whatsoever man there be of the house of israel 
or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eateth any manner of blood. I will even set my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, No soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourneth among you to eat blood. And whatsoever man there be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, which hunteth and catcheth any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof, and cover it with dust, for it is the life of all flesh. The blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. And every soul that eateth that which died of itself, or that which was torn with beasts, whether it be one of your own country, or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean, until the even. Then shall he be clean. But if he wash them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his iniquity. Chapter 18 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do? And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do? Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Ye shall do my judgments, and keep mine ordinances, to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes, and my judgments, which, if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him, to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father, or the nakedness of thy mother, shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father, or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter, or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife, she is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law, she is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswomen. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness, beside the other in her lifetime. Also, Thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her nakedness as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. 
and thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down thereto. It is confusion. Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled, that the land spew not you out also, when ye defile it as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God, Chapter 19 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer it at your own will. It shall be eaten the same day ye offer it, and on the morrow, and if aught remain until the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable. It shall not be accepted. Therefore every one that eateth it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned the hallowed thing of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest, and thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy God. I am the Lord. He shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honour the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbour. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tale-bearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbour. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbour, and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, 
but thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. I am the Lord. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman, that is a bondmaid, betrothed to an husband, and not at all redeemed, nor freedom given her, she shall be scourged. They shall not be put to death, because she was not free. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram or a trespass offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him, with the ram of the trespass offering, before the Lord, for his sin which he hath done. And the sin which he hath done shall be forgiven him. And when ye shall come into the land, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten of. But in the fourth year all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord withal. And in the fifth year shall ye eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall not eat any thing with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment, nor observe times. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths, and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head, and honour the face of the old man, and fear thy God. I am the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, in meat-yard, in weight, or in measure. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah, and a just hen shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Chapter 20 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Again thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and will cut him off from among his people, because he hath given of his seed unto Molech, to defile my sanctuary, and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, when he giveth of his seed unto Molech, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man, and against his family, and will cut him off, and all that go a-whoring after him, to commit whoredom with Molech, from among their people. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards, to go a-whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. 
sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for i am the lord your god and ye shall keep my statutes and do them i am the lord which sanctify you for every one that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death he hath cursed his father or his mother his blood shall be upon him and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife even he that committeth adultery with his neighbour's wife the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death and the man that lieth with his father's wife hath uncovered his father's nakedness both of them shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them and if a man lie with his daughter-in-law both of them shall surely be put to death they have wrought confusion their blood shall be upon them if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman both of them have committed an abomination they shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them and if a man take a wife and her mother it is wickedness they shall be burnt with fire both he and they that there be no wickedness among you and if a man lie with a beast he shall surely be put to death and ye shall slay the beast and if a woman approach unto any beast and lie down thereto thou shalt kill the woman and the beast they shall surely be put to death their blood shall be upon them and if a man shall take his sister his father's daughter or his mother's daughter and see her nakedness and she see his nakedness it is a wicked thing and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people he hath uncovered his sister's nakedness he shall bear his iniquity and if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness and shall uncover her nakedness he hath discovered her fountain and she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood and both of them shall be cut off from among their people and thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister nor of thy father's sister for he uncovereth his near kin they shall bear their iniquity and if a man shall lie with his uncle's wife he hath uncovered his uncle's nakedness they shall bear their sin they shall die childless and if a man shall take his brother's wife it is an unclean thing he hath uncovered his brother's nakedness they shall be childless ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land whither i bring you to dwell therein spew you not out and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which i cast out before you for they committed all these things and therefore i abhorred them but i have said unto you ye shall inherit their land and i will give it unto you to possess it a land that floweth with milk and honey i am the lord your god which have separated you from other people ye shall therefore put difference between clean beasts and unclean and between unclean fowls and clean and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beast or by fowl or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground which i have separated from you as unclean and ye shall be holy unto me for i the lord am holy and have severed you from other people that ye should be mine a man also or woman that hath a familiar spirit or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death they shall stone them with stones their blood shall be upon them chapter twenty one and the lord said unto moses speak unto the priests the sons of aaron and say unto them there shall none be defiled for the dead among his people but for his kin that is near unto him that is for his mother and for his father and for his son and for his daughter and for his brother and for his sister 
a virgin that is nigh unto him, which hath no husband, for her may be defiled. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of thy beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. They shall be holy unto their God, and do not profane the name of their God, for the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and the bread of their God they do offer, therefore they shall be holy. They shall not take a wife that is a whore, or profane, neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband, for he is holy unto his God. Thou shalt sanctify him, therefore, for he offereth the bread of thy God, he shall be holy unto thee. For I, the Lord, which sanctify you, am holy. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she profaneth her father, she shall be burnt with fire. And he that is the high priest among his brethren, upon whose head the anointing oil is poured, and that is consecrated to put on the garments, shall not uncover his head nor rend his clothes. Neither shall he go into any dead body, nor defile himself for his father or for his mother. Neither shall he go out of the sanctuary, nor profane the sanctuary of his God. For the crown of the anointing oil of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. And he shall take a wife in her virginity, a widow or a divorced woman, or profane, or an harlot, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. Neither shall he profane his seed among his people, for I, the Lord, do sanctify him. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach, a blind man, or a lame, or he that hath a flat nose, or any thing superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed, or broken-handed, or crook-backed, or a dwarf, or that hath a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron the priest shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. He shall eat the bread of his God, both of the most holy and of the holy, only he shall not go in unto the veil, nor come nigh unto the altar, because he hath a blemish, that he profane not my sanctuaries. For I, the Lord, do sanctify them. And Moses told it unto Aaron, and to his sons, and unto all the children of Israel. Chapter 22 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and to his sons, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Israel, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hallow unto me. I am the Lord. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations, that goeth unto the holy things, which the children of Israel hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that so shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. What man soever of the seed of Aaron is a leper, or hath a running issue, he shall not eat of the holy things, until he be clean. And whoso toucheth anything that is unclean by the dead, or by a man whose seed goeth from him, or whosoever toucheth any creeping thing, whereby he may be made unclean, or a man of whom he may take uncleanness, whatsoever uncleanness he hath. 
the soul which hath touched any such, shall be unclean until even, and shall not eat of the holy things, unless he wash his flesh with water. And when the sun is down, he shall be clean, and shall afterward eat of the holy things, because it is his food. That which dieth of itself, or is torn with beasts, he shall not eat to defile himself therewith. I am the Lord. They shall therefore keep mine ordinance, lest they bear sin for it, and die therefore if they profane it. I, the Lord, do sanctify them. There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner of the priest or an hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. But if the priest buy any soul with his money, he shall eat of it, and he that is born in his house, they shall eat of his meat. If the priest's daughter also be married unto a stranger, she may not eat of an offering of the holy things, but if the priest's daughter be a widow, or divorced, or have no child, and is returned unto her father's house, as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, and there shall be no stranger eat thereof. And if a man eat of the holy thing unwittingly, then he shall put the fifth part thereof unto it, and shall give it unto the priest with the holy thing. And they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Israel, which they offer unto the Lord, or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things, for I, the Lord, do sanctify them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and to his sons, and unto all the children of Israel, and say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Israel, or of the strangers in Israel, that will offer his oblation for all his vows, and for all his free will offerings, which they will offer unto the Lord for a burnt offering. Ye shall offer at your own will a male without blemish, of the beeves, of the sheep, or of the goats. But whatsoever hath a blemish, that shall ye not offer, for it shall not be acceptable for you. And whosoever offereth a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow, or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. Blind, or broken, or maimed, or having a wen, or scurvy, or scabbed, ye shall not offer these unto the Lord, nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. Either a bullock or a lamb that hath anything superfluous or lacking in his parts, that mayest thou offer for a free will offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. He shall not offer unto the Lord that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut, neither shall ye make any offering thereof in your land, neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your God of any of these because their corruption is in them, and blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When a bullock, or a sheep, or a goat is brought forth, then it shall be seven days under the day, and from the eighth day, and thenceforth it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And whether it be cow or ewe, ye shall not kill it, and her young both in one day. And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. On the same day it shall be eaten up, ye shall leave none of it until the morrow. I am the Lord. Therefore shall ye keep my commandments, and do them. I am the Lord. Neither shall ye profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Israel. I am the Lord which hallow you, that brought you out of the land of Egypt, to, to be your God. I am the Lord. End of section 11
Section 12 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Leviticus, chapters 23 to 27. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta. Chapter 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, an holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month, at even, is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. In the first day ye shall have unholy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest, unto the priest, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord, to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it, and ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf, an he lamb without blemish of the first year, for a burnt offering unto the Lord. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord, for a sweet savour. And the drink offering thereof shall be wine, the fourth part of an hen. And ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statute for ever, throughout your generations, in all your dwellings. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that he brought the sheaf of the wave offering. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be bacon with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year, and one young bullock, and two rams. They shall be for a burnt offering unto the Lord, with their meat offering, and their drink offerings, even an offering made by fire of sweet savour unto the Lord. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace offerings. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruits for a wave offering before the Lord with the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be an holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statute for ever, in all your dwellings, throughout your generations. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field when thou reapest. Neither shalt thou gather any gleaning of thy harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, 
a memorial of blowing of trumpets, an holy convocation. He shall do no servile work therein, but he shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in that self same day, for it is a day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. He shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute for ever, throughout your generations, in all your dwellings. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even. From even unto even shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles, for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. He shall do no servile work therein. Seven days shall ye offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, every thing upon his day. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings which ye give unto the Lord, also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, Ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year, it shall be a statute for ever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, and Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feasts of the Lord. Chapter 24 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive beaten for the light to cause the lamps to burn continually without the veil of the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation shall aaron order it from the evening unto the morning before the lord continually it shall be a statute for ever in your generations ye shall order the lamps upon the pure candlestick before the lord continually and thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof Two tenth deals shall be in one cake, and thou shalt set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, 
that it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Every Sabbath he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat it in the holy place, for it is most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. And the son of an Israelitish woman, whose father was an Egyptian, went out among the children of Israel. And this son of the Israelitish woman, and a man of Israel, strove together in the camp, and the Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord, and cursed. And they brought him unto Moses, and his mother's name was Shilomith, the daughter of Debri, of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in ward, that the mind of the Lord might be shewed them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp, and let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head, and let all the congregation stone him. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin, and he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord, he shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him as well the stranger as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of the Lord, shall be put to death. And he that killeth any man shall surely be put to death. And he that killeth a beast shall make it good, beast for beast. And if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he hath done, so shall it be done to him, breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, as he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done to him again. And he that killeth a beast, he shall restore it, and he that killeth a man, he shall be put to death. Ye shall have one manner of law, as well for the stranger as for one of your own country, for I am the Lord your God. And Moses spake to the children of Israel, that they should bring forth him that had cursed out of the camp, and stone him with stones. And the children of Israel did, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. For thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard that which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee and thy servant, and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee, and for thy cattle, and for the beasts that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meet. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then thou shalt cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, a 
and he shall return every man unto his possession, and he shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undressed. For it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee ye shall return every man unto his possession. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbour, or buyest aught of thy neighbour's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. According to the number of years after the jubilee thou shalt buy of thy neighbour, and according unto the number of years of the fruits he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years thou shalt increase the price thereof, and according to the fewness of years thou shalt diminish the price of it. For according to the number of the years of the fruits doth he sell unto thee. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear thy God, for I am the Lord your God. Wherefore ye shall do my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land in safety, and the land shall yield her fruit, and ye shall eat your fill, and dwell therein in safety. And if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. And ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year. Until her fruits come in, ye shall eat of the old store. The land shall not be sold for ever, for the land is mine. For ye are strangers and sojourners with me, and in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor, and hath sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it, and himself be able to redeem it, then let him count the years of the sale thereof, and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. But if he be not able to restore it to him, then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that hath bought it until the year of jubilee. And in the jubilee it shall go out, and he shall return unto his possession. And if a man sell a dwelling-house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established for ever to him that bought it throughout his generations. It shall not go out in the jubilee. But the houses of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed, and they shall go out in the jubilee. Notwithstanding, the cities of the Levites and the houses of the cities of their possession may the Levites redeem at any time. And if a man purchase of the Levites, then the house that was sold, and the city of his possession, shall go out in the year of Jubilee. For the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. But the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold, for it is their perpetual possession. And if thy brother be waxen poor, and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him, yea, though he be a stranger or a sojourner, that he may live with thee. Take thou no usury of him, or increase, 
but fear thy God, that thy brother may live with thee. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury, nor lend him thy victuals for increase. For I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, to give you the land of Canaan, and to be your God. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, but as an hired servant, and as a sojourner he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of jubilee, and then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Thou shalt not rule over him, with rigour, but shalt fear thy God, both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall ye buy bondmen and bondmaids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do sojourn among you, of them shall ye buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land and they shall be your possession. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your bondmen for ever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family. After that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him, or if he be able he may redeem himself. And he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to him unto the year of Jubilee. And the price of his sale shall be according to the number of years, according to the time of an hired servant, shall it be with him. If there be yet many years behind, according unto them he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. And if there remain but few years unto the year of Jubilee, then he shall count with him, and according unto his years shall he give him again the price of his redemption. And as a yearly hired servant shall he be with him, and the other shall not rule with vigour over him in thy sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. For unto me the children of Israel are servants, they are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Chapter 26 He shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths, and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If ye walk in my statutes, and keep my commandments, and do them, then I will give you rain in due season and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely, and I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, 
and I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you, and I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke, and made you go upright. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron, and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits, and if ye walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you, according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, and destroy your cattle, and make you few in number, and your high ways shall be desolate. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you, and will punish you yet seven times for your sin. And I will bring a sword upon you, that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you and ye shall be delivered into the hands of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. And if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins, and ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat, and I will destroy your high places, and cut down your images, and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols, and my soul shall abhor you and I will make your cities waste, and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation, and I will not smell the savour of your sweet odours, and I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell therein shall be astonished by it, and I will scatter you among the heathen, and will draw out a sword after you, and your land shall be desolate, and your cities waste, then shall the land enjoy her sabbath, 
as long as it lieth desolate, and ye be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her sabbaths. As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your sabbaths when ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts, in the land of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them, and they shall flee as fleeing from a sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth, and they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, when none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up, and they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity, in your enemies' lands, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. If they shall confess their iniquity, and the iniquity of their fathers, with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and then they accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land." The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her sabbaths, while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because, even because, they despised my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them. For I am the Lord their God, but I will, for their sakes, remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord." These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Chapter 27 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, The persons shall be for the Lord by thy estimation, and thy estimation shall be of the male from twenty years old, even unto sixty years old. Even thy estimation shall be fifty shekels of silver, after the shekel of the sanctuary. And if it be a female, then thy estimation shall be thirty shekels. And if it be from five years old, even unto twenty years old, Then thy estimation shall be, of the male, twenty shekels, and for the female, ten shekels. And if it be from a month old, even unto five years old, then thy estimation shall be, of the male, five shekels of silver, and for the female, thy estimation shall be three shekels of silver. And if it be from sixty years old and above, if it be a male, then thy estimation shall be fifteen shekels, and for the female ten shekels. But if he be poorer than thy estimation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall value him, according to his ability that vowed shall the priest value him. And if it be a beast, whereof men bring an offering unto the Lord, all that any man giveth of such unto the Lord shall be holy. He shall not alter it, nor change it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good. 
and if he shall at all change beast for beast then it and the exchange thereof shall be holy and if it be any unclean beast of which they do not offer a sacrifice unto the lord then he shall present the beast before the priest and the priest shall value it whether it be good or bad as thou valuest it who art the priest so shall it be but if he will at all redeem it then he shall add a fifth part thereof unto thy estimation and when a man shall sanctify his house to be holy unto the lord then the priest shall estimate it whether it be good or bad as the priest shall estimate it so shall it stand and if he that sanctified it will redeem his house then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it and it shall be his and if a man shall sanctify unto the lord some part of a field of his possession then thy estimation shall be according to the seed thereof an omer of barley seed shall be valued at fifty shekels of silver if he sanctify his field from the year of jubilee according to thy estimation it shall stand but if he sanctify his field after the jubilee then the priest shall reckon unto him the money according to the years that remain even unto the year of the jubilee and shall be abated from thy estimation and if he that sanctified the field will in any wise redeem it then he shall add the fifth part of the money of thy estimation unto it and it shall be assured to him and if he will not redeem the field or if he have sold the field to another man it shall not be redeemed any more but the field when it goeth out in the jubilee shall be holy unto the lord as a field devoted the possession thereof shall be the priests and if a man sanctify unto the lord a field which he hath bought which is not of the fields of his possession then the priest shall reckon unto him the worth of thy estimation even unto the year of the jubilee and he shall give thine estimation in that day as a holy thing unto the lord in the year of the jubilee the field shall return unto him of whom it was bought even to him to whom the possession of the land did belong and all thy estimations shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary twenty geras shall be the shekel only the firstling of the beasts which should be the lord's firstling no man shall sanctify it whether it be ox or sheep it is the lord's and if it be of an unclean beast then he shall redeem it according to thine estimation and shall add a fifth part of it thereto or if it be not redeemed then it shall be sold according to thy estimation notwithstanding no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the lord of all that he hath both of man and beast and of the field of his possession shall be sold or redeemed every devoted thing is most holy unto the lord none devoted which shall be devoted of men shall be redeemed but shall surely be put to death and all the tithe of the land whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree is the lord's it is holy unto the lord and if a man will at all redeem aught of his tithes he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof and concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock even of whatsoever passeth under the rod the tenth shall be holy unto the lord he shall not search whether it be good or bad neither shall he change it and if he change it at all then both it and the change thereof shall be holy and it shall not be redeemed these are the commandments which the lord commanded moses for the children of israel in mount sinai end of section 12
the King James Version. Numbers, chapters 1 to 11. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take ye the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, after their families, by the house of their fathers, with the number of their names, every male by their poles, from twenty years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. And with you there shall be a man of every tribe, every one head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men that shall stand with you. Of the tribe of Reuben, Elizur, the son of Shedjur. Of Simeon, Shalumiel, the son of Zershaddai. Of Judah, Nashon, the son of Amminadab, of Issachar, Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, of Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helon, of the children of Joseph, of Ephraim, Elishema, the son of Amihud, of Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Padasher, of Benjamin, Abidon, the son of Gideonai, of Dan, Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai, of Asher, Pachil, the son of Akron, of Gad, Eliasaph, the son of Duel, of Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enan. These were the renowned of the congregation, princes of the tribes of their fathers, heads of thousands in Israel. And Moses and Aaron took these men, which are expressed by their names, and they assembled all the congregation, together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, by their poles. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. And the children of Reuben, Israel's eldest son, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Reuben, were forty and six thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Simeon, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, those that were numbered of them, according to the number of the names, by their poles, every male from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war. Those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Simeon, were fifty and nine thousand and three. And the children of Gad, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Gad, were forty and five thousand six hundred and fifty. Of the children of Judah, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Judah, were threescore and fourteen thousand and six hundred. Of the children of Issachar, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Issachar, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Zebulun, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Zebulun, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Joseph, namely, of the children of Ephraim, 
by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Ephraim, were forty thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Manasseh, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Manasseh, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Of the children of Benjamin, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Benjamin, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. And the children of Dan, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Dan, were threescore and two thousand and seven. Of the children of Asher, by their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Asher, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Of the children of Naphtali, throughout their generations, after their families, by the house of their fathers, according to the number of the names, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war, those that were numbered of them, even of the tribe of Naphtali, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. These are those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel, being twelve men. Each one was for the house of his fathers. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel, by the house of their fathers, from twenty years old and upward, all that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Even all they that were numbered were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites, after the tribe of their fathers, were not numbered among them. For the Lord had spoken unto Moses, saying, only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel, but thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle, and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and it shall encamp round about the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the children of Israel shall pitch their tents, every man by his own camp, and every man by his own standard, throughout their hosts. But the Levites shall pitch round about the tabernacle of testimony, that there be no wrath upon the congregation of the children of Israel. And the Levites shall keep the charge of the tabernacle of testimony. And the children of Israel did. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did they. Chapter 2 And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Every man of the children of Israel shall pitch by his own standard with the ensign of their father's house far off about the tabernacle of the congregation shall they pitch. And on the east side toward the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. And Nashon the son of Amminadab shall be captain of the children of Judah and his host and those that were numbered of them were threescore and fourteen and six thousand. And those that do pitch next unto him shall be the tribe of Issachar. And Nethaniel, the son of Zuar, shall be captain of the children of Issachar. 
and his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and four thousand and four hundred. Then the tribe of Zebulun, and Eliab, the son of Helon, shall be captain of the children of Zebulun. And his host, and those that were numbered thereof, were fifty and seven thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered in the camp of Judah were an hundred thousand and fourscore thousand and six thousand and four hundred throughout their armies. These shall first set forth. On the south side shall be the standard of the camp of Reuben, according to their armies. And the captain of the children of Reuben shall be Elizur, the son of Shedur, and his host, and those that were numbered thereof were forty and six thousand and five hundred. And those which pitch by him shall be the tribe of Simeon, and the captain of the children of Simeon shall be Shalumiel, the son of Zerushaddai. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were fifty and nine thousand and three hundred. Then the tribe of Gad, and the captain of the sons of Gad, shall be Eliasaph, the son of Reuel. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and five thousand and six hundred and fifty. All that were numbered in the camp of Reuben were an hundred thousand and fifty and one thousand and four hundred and fifty throughout their armies, and they shall set forth in the second rank. Then the tabernacle of the congregation shall set forward with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camp. As they encamp, so shall they set forward, every man in his place, by their standards. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim, according to their armies, and the captains of the son of Ephraim shall be Elishema, the son of Amihud. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty thousand and five hundred. And by him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, and the captain of the children of Manasseh shall be Gamaliel, the son of Pedasher. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and two thousand and two hundred. Then the tribe of Benjamin, and the captains of the sons of Benjamin, shall be Abidon, the son of Gideonai. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were thirty and five thousand and four hundred. All that were numbered of the camp of Ephraim were an hundred thousand and eight thousand and an hundred throughout their armies, and they shall go forward in the third rank. The standard of the camp of Dan shall be on the north side by their armies, and the captain of the children of Dan shall be Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were threescore and two thousand and seven hundred. And those that encamp by him shall be the tribe of Asher, and the captain of the children of Asher shall be Pegio, the son of Ochran. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were forty and one thousand and five hundred. Then the tribe of Naphtali, and the captain of the children of Naphtali, shall be Ahira, the son of Enan. And his host, and those that were numbered of them, were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. All they that were numbered in the camp of Dan were an hundred thousand and fifty and seven thousand and six hundred. They shall go hindmost with their standards. These are those which were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers. All those that were numbered of the camps throughout their hosts were six hundred thousand and three thousand and five hundred and fifty. But the Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward, every one after their families, according to the house of their fathers. Chapter 3 these also are the generations of Aaron and Moses, in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, 
Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests which were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord, when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron their father. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and present them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister unto him. And they shall keep his charge, and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation, to do the service of the tabernacle. And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the charge of the children of Israel, to do the service of the tabernacle. And thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. And thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall wait on their priest's office. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel, instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel. Therefore the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. For on the day that I smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Mine shall they be. I am the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi after the house of their fathers, by their families, every male from a month old and upward shalt thou number them. And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord, as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon and Kohath and Merari. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their families, Libni and Shimei. And the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram and Isahar, Hebron and Uzeel. And the sons of Merari by their families, Melai and Mushai. These are the families of the Levites, according to the house of their fathers. Of Gershon was the family of the Libnites, and the family of the Shimites. These are the families of the Gershonites. Those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males, from a month upward, even those that were numbered of them, were seven thousand and five hundred. The families of the Gershonites shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward. And the chief of the house of the fathers of the Gershonites shall be Eliasaph, the son of Lael. And the charge of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle, and the tent, the covering thereof, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the hangings of the court, and the curtain for the door of the court, which is by the tabernacle, and by the altar round about, and the cords of it for all the service thereof. And of Kohath was the family of the Amramites, and the family of the Izarhites, and the family of the Hebronites, and the family of the Uzeelites. These are the families of the Kohathites. In the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, were eight thousand and six hundred, keeping the charge of the sanctuary. The families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward. 
and the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kothites shall be Elizaphan, the son of Uziel. And their charge shall be the ark, and the table, and the candlestick, and the altars, and the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they minister, and the hanging, and all the service thereof. And Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, shall be chief over the chief of the Levites, and have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. Of Merari was the family of the Maelites, and the family of the Mushites. These are the families of Merari. And those that were numbered of them, according to the number of all the males from a month old and upward, were six thousand and two hundred. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of Merari was Zuriel, the son of Abihail. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward. And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle, and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all that serveth thereto and the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. All that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward, were twenty and two thousand. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel, from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. And thou shalt take the Levites for me, I am the Lord, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. And the cattle of the Levites, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. And Moses numbered, as the Lord commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Israel and all the firstborn males by the number of names, from a month old and upward, of those that were numbered of them, were twenty and two thousand two hundred and threescore and thirteen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. And for those that are to be redeemed of the two hundred and threescore and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites, thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the pole, after the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them. The shekel is twenty geras. And thou shalt give the money, wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed, unto Aaron and to his sons. And Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them, that were redeemed by the Levites. Of the firstborn of the children of Israel took he the money, a thousand three hundred and threescore and five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons, according to the word of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. Chapter 4 And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, after their families, by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even until fifty years old, all that enter into the host, to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. 
This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation, about the most holy things. And when the camp setteth forward, Aaron shall come, and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil, and cover the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of badgers' skins, and shall spread over it a cloth holy of blue, and shall put in the staves thereof. And upon the table of shewbread they shall spread a cloth of blue, and put thereon the dishes and the spoons, and the bowls and covers to cover withal. And the continual bread shall be thereon. And they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, and cover the same with a covering of badgers' skins, and shall put in the staves thereof. And they shall take a cloth of blue, and cover the candlestick of the light, and his lamps, and his tongs, and his snuff-dishes, and all the oil-vessels thereof, wherewith they minister unto it. And they shall put it, and all the vessels thereof, within a covering of badgers' skins, and shall put it upon a bar. And upon the golden altar they shall spread a cloth of blue, and cover it with a covering of badgers' skins, and shall put to the staves thereof. And they shall take all the instruments of ministry, wherewith they minister in the sanctuary, and put them in a cloth of blue, and cover them with a covering of badgers' skins, and shall put them on a bar. And they shall take away the ashes from the altar, and spread a purple cloth thereon. And they shall put upon it all the vessels thereof, wherewith they minister about it, even the censers, the flesh-hooks, and the shovels, and the basins, all the vessels of the altar. And they shall spread upon it a covering of badgers' skins, and put to the staves of it. And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary, and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is to set forward, after that the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. But they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation. And to the office of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, pertaineth the oil for the light, and the sweet incense, and the daily meat offering, and the anointing oil, and the oversight of all the tabernacle, and of all that therein is, in the sanctuary, and in the vessels thereof. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Cut ye not off the tribe of the families of the Kohathites from among the Levites, but thus do unto them that they may live and not die when they approach unto the most holy things. Aaron and his sons shall go in and appoint them every one to his service and to his burden, but they shall not go in to see when the holy things are covered lest they die. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take also the sum of the sons of Gershon throughout the houses of their fathers by their families. From thirty years old and upward until fifty years old shalt thou number them. All that enter in to perform the service, to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. This is the service of the families of the Gershonites to serve, and for burdens. And they shall bear the curtains of the tabernacle, and the tabernacle of the congregation, his covering, and the covering of the badger's skins that is above it, and the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the hangings of the court, and the hanging for the door of the gate of the court, which is by the tabernacle, and by the altar round about, and their cords, and all the instruments of their service, and all that is made for them, so shall they serve. At the appointment of Aaron and his sons shall be all the service of the sons of the Gershonites, in all their burdens and in all their service. And ye shall appoint unto them, in charge all their burdens. This is the service of the families of the sons of Gershon, in the tabernacle of the congregation. And their charge shall be under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. As for the sons of Merari, thou shalt number them after their families, by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old shalt thou number them, 
every one that entereth into the service, to do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation. And this is the charge of their burdens, according to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation. The boards of the tabernacle, and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords, with all their instruments, and with all their surface. And by name ye shall reckon the instruments of the charge of their burden. This is the service of the families of the sons of Merari, according to all their service in the tabernacle of the congregation, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. And Moses and Aaron and the chief of the congregation numbered the sons of the Kohathites after their families, and Moses and Aaron and the chief of the congregation numbered the sons of the Kohathites after their families and after the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, every one that entereth into the service for the work in the tabernacle of the congregation. And those that were numbered of them by their families were two thousand seven hundred and fifty. These were they that were numbered of the families of the Kohathites, all that might do service in the tabernacle of the congregation, which Moses and Aaron did number, according to the commandment of the Lord, by the hand of Moses. And those that were numbered of the sons of Gershon, throughout their families, and by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, every one that entereth into the service, for the work in the tabernacle of the congregation, even those that were numbered of them, throughout their families, by the house of their fathers, were two thousand and six hundred and thirty. These are they that were numbered of the families of the sons of Gershon, of all that might do service in the tabernacle of the congregation, whom Moses and Aaron did number according to the commandment of the Lord. And those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, throughout their families, by the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, every one that entereth into the service, for the work in the tabernacle of the congregation, even those that were numbered of them after their families were three thousand and two hundred. These be those that were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. All those that were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron and the chief of Israel numbered after their families and after the house of their fathers, from thirty years old and upward, even unto fifty years old, every one that came to do the service of the ministry and the service of the burden in the tabernacle of the congregation. Even those that were numbered of them were eight thousand and five hundred and fourscore. According to the commandment of the Lord, they were numbered by the hand of Moses, every one according to his service and according to his burden. Thus were they numbered of him, as the Lord commanded Moses. Chapter 5 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, that they put out of the camp every leper, and every one that hath an issue, and whosoever is defiled by the dead, both male and female, shall ye put out, Without the camp shall ye put them, that they defile not their camps, in the midst whereof I dwell. And the children of Israel did so, and put them out without the camp. As the Lord spake unto Moses, so did the children of Israel. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, when a man or woman shall commit any sin that men commit, to do a trespass against the Lord, and that person be guilty, then they shall confess their sin which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. But if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass unto, 
let the trespass be recompensed unto the Lord, even to the priest, beside the ram of the atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. And every offering of all the holy things of the children of Israel, which they bring unto the priest, shall be his. And every man's hallowed things shall be his. Whatsoever any man giveth the priest, it shall be his. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man's wife go aside, and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and she be defiled, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner, and the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled, then the man shall bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon. For it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near, and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take, and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord, and uncover the woman's head, and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath, and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causeth the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people, when the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell. And this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse. And the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her, and become bitter. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand, and shall wave the offering before the Lord, and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take an handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that, if she be defiled, and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her, and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thigh shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free, and shall conceive seed. This is the law of jealousies, when a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband, and is defiled, or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him, and he be jealous over his wife, and shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall execute upon her all this law, then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity, 
and this woman shall bear her iniquity. Chapter 6 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves unto the Lord, he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernels even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head, until the days be fulfilled, in which he separateth himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy, and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separateth himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, or for his mother, for his brother, or for his sister, when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation he is holy unto the Lord. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. And on the eighth day he shall bring two turtles, or two young pigeons, to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering, and make an atonement for him, for that he sinned by the dead and shall hallow his head that same day. And he shall consecrate unto the Lord the days of his separation, and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost, because his separation was defiled. And this is the law of the Nazarite, when the days of his separation are fulfilled. He shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and he shall offer his offering unto the Lord, one he lamb of the first year, without blemish, for a burnt offering, and one ewe lamb of the first year, without blemish, for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish, for peace offerings, and a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, and wafers of unleavened bread anointed with oil and their meat offering, and their drink offerings. And the priest shall bring them before the Lord, and shall offer his sin offering, and his burnt offering. And he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord. And he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord. And he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, with the basket of unleavened bread, the priest shall offer also his meat offering and his drink offering. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall take the hair of the head of his separation, and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the ram, and one unleavened cake out of the basket, and one unleavened wafer, and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazarite, after the hair of his separation is shaven. And the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. This is holy for the priest, with the wave breast and heave shoulder. After that the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite, who hath vowed, and of his offering unto the Lord for his separation, beside that that his hand shall get. According to the vow which he vowed, so he must do after the law of his separation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and unto his sons, saying, 
on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Chapter 7 And it came to pass, on the day that Moses had fully set up the tabernacle, and had anointed it, and sanctified it, and all the instruments thereof, both the altar, and all the vessels thereof, and had anointed them, and sanctified them, that the princes of Israel, heads of the house of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes, and were over them that were numbered, offered. And they brought their offering before the Lord, six covered wagons, and twelve oxen, a wagon for two of the princes, and for each one an ox. And they brought them before the tabernacle. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take it of them, that they may be to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt give them unto the Levites, to every man according to his service. And Moses took the wagons and the oxen, and gave them unto the Levites. Two wagons and four oxen he gave unto the sons of Gershon, according to their service. And four wagons and eight oxen he gave unto the sons of Merari, according unto their service, under the hand of Ithamar, the son of Aaron the priest. But unto the sons of Kohath he gave none, because the service of the sanctuary belonging unto them was that they should bear it upon their shoulders. And the princes offered for dedicating of the altar in the day that it was anointed, even the princes offered their offering before the altar. And the Lord said unto Moses, They shall offer their offering, each prince on his day, for the dedicating of the altar. And he that offered his offering the first day was Nashon, the son of Aminadab, of the tribe of Judah. And his offering was one silver charger, the weight thereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. Both of them were full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering. One spoon of ten shekels of gold, full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering. One kid of the goats, for a sin offering and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. On the second day, Nathaniel, the son of Zuar, prince of Issachar, did offer. He offered for his offering one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil, for a meat offering, one spoon of gold of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Nethaniel, the son of Zuar. On the third day, Eliab, the son of Helon, prince of the children of Zebulun, did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering. One golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense. One young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering. One kid of the goats for a sin offering. 
and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliab, the son of Helon. On the fourth day, Elijah, the son of Shedjur, prince of the children of Reuben, did offer. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elijah, the son of Shedir. On the fifth day, Shalumiel, the son of Zerushaddai, prince of the children of Simeon, did offer. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Shalumiel, the son of Zerushaddai. On the sixth day, Eliasaph, the son of Deuel, prince of the children of Gad, offered. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of an hundred and thirty shekels, a silver bowl of seventy shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Eliasaph, the son of Deuel. On the seventh day, Elishema, the son of Amihud, prince of the children of Ephraim, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats, for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Elishema, the son of Amihud. On the eighth day offered Gamaliel, the son of Pedasia, prince of the children of Manasseh. His offering was one silver charger of the weight of an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a bird's offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Gamaliel, the son of Pedasher. On the ninth day, Abidon, the son of Gideoni, prince of the children of Benjamin, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Abidon, the son of Gideoni. On the tenth day, Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai, 
prince of the children of Dan, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats, for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai. On the eleventh day, Pajil, the son of Akron, prince of the children of Asher, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats, for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Pajil, the son of Akron. On the twelfth day, Ahira, the son of Enan, prince of the children of Naphtali, offered. His offering was one silver charger, the weight whereof was an hundred and thirty shekels, one silver bowl of seventy shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, both of them full of fine flour, mingled with oil, for a meat offering, one golden spoon of ten shekels, full of incense, one young bullock, one ram, one lamb of the first year, for a burnt offering, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, and for a sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five he-goats, five lambs of the first year. This was the offering of Ahira, the son of Enan. This was the dedication of the altar, in the day when it was anointed, by the princes of Israel. Twelve charges of silver, twelve silver bowls, twelve spoons of gold, each charger of silver, weighing an hundred and thirty shekels, each bowl seventy. All the silver vessels weighed two thousand and four hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary. The golden spoons were twelve, full of incense, weighing ten shekels apiece, after the shekel of the sanctuary. All the gold of the spoons was an hundred and twenty shekels. All the oxen for the burnt offering were twelve bullocks, the rams twelve, the lambs of the first year twelve, with their meat offering, and the kids of the goats for sin offering twelve. And all the oxen for the sacrifice of the peace offerings were twenty and four bullocks, the rams sixty, the goats sixty, the lambs of the first year sixty. This was the dedication of the altar, after that it was anointed. And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat that was upon the ark of the testimony, from between the two cherubims, and he spake unto him. Chapter 8 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. And Aaron did so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick, as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold, unto the shaft thereof, Unto the flowers thereof was beaten work. According to the pattern which the Lord had shewed Moses, so he made the candlestick. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the children of Israel, and cleanse them. And thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them. Sprinkle water of purifying upon them, and let them shave all their flesh, and let them wash their clothes, and so make themselves clean. 
then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with oil, and another young bullock shalt thou take for a sin offering. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the Lord, and the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offspring of the children of Israel, that they may execute the service of the Lord. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks, and shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering unto the Lord, to make an atonement for the Levites. And thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron, and before his sons, and offer them for an offering unto the Lord. Thus thou shalt separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. And after that shall the Levites go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And thou shalt cleanse them, and offer them for an offering, for they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Israel, instead of such as open every womb. Even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel have I taken them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast, on the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. And I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel. And I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation and to make an atonement for the children of Israel that there be no plague among the children of Israel when the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. And Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according to all that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites. So did the children of Israel unto them. And the Levites were purified, and they washed their clothes, and Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord, and Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. And after that went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons. As the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so did they unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites. From twenty and five years old and upward, they shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And from the age of fifty years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof, and shall serve no more, but shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation to keep the charge, and shall do no service. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites." Touching their charge. Chapter 9 And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, in the first month of the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the fourteenth day of this month, at even he shall keep it, in his appointed season according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month, at even in the wilderness of Sinai. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back, 
that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you, or of your posterity, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, if any man of you, or of your posterity, shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Fourteenth day of the second month, at even they shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep it. But the man that is clean, and is not in a journey, and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people, because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. That man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you, and will keep the Passover unto the Lord, according to the ordinance of the Passover, and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance, both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony. And at even there was upon the tabernacle, as it were, the appearance of fire until the morning, so it was alway. The cloud covered it by day, and the appearance of fire at night. And when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle, then after that the children of Israel journeyed. And in the place where the cloud abode, there the children of Israel pitched their tents. At the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed. And at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord, and journeyed not. And so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was, when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days, or a month, or a year, that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents, and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord they rested in the tents, and at the commandment of the Lord they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord, at the commandment of the Lord, by the hand of Moses. End of section 13「Section 14 of the Holy Bible, the King James Version. Numbers, chapters 10 to 20. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 10 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them that thou mayst use them for the calling of the assembly, and for the journeyings of the camps. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. When ye blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward, when ye blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey, 
they shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance for ever throughout your generations. And if ye go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresseth you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. Also, in the day of your gladness, and in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings, and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass, on the twentieth day of the second month, in the second year, that the cloud was taken up from off the tabernacle of the testimony. And the children of Israel took their journeys out of the wilderness of Sinai, and the cloud rested in the wilderness of Paran. And they first took their journey according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. In the first place went the standard of the camp of the children of Judah, according to their armies, and over his host was Nashon, the son of Amminadab. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Issachar was Nathaniel, the son of Zuar. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Zebulun was Eliab, the son of Helon. And the tabernacle was taken down, and the sons of Gershon and the sons of Merari set forward, bearing the tabernacle. And the standard of the camp of Reuben set forward according to their armies. And over his host was Elizur, the son of Shedir. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Simeon was Shalumiel, the son of Zerushaddai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Gad was Eliasaph, the son of Duel. And the Kohathites set forward, bearing the sanctuary. And the other did set up the tabernacle against they came. And the standard of the camp of the children of Ephraim set forward, according to their armies. And over his host was Elishama, the son of Amihud. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Manasseh was Gamaliel, the son of Padeshur. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Benjamin was Abidon, the son of Gideoni. And the standard of the camp of the children of Dan set forward, which was the re-reward of all the camps throughout their hosts. And over his host was Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Asher was Pachil, the son of Ochran. And over the host of the tribe of the children of Naphtali was Ahira, the son of Enan. Thus were the journeyings of the children of Israel according to their armies when they set forward. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Rachel the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. For the Lord hath spoken good concerning Israel. And he said unto them, I will not go, but I will depart to mine own land, and to my kindred. And he said, Leave us not, I pray thee, for as much as thou knowest how we are to encamp in the wilderness, and thou mayest be to us instead of eyes. And it shall be, if thou go with us, yea, it shall be, that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto thee. And they departed from the mount of the Lord three days' journey. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them in the three days' journey, to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was upon them by day when they went out of the camp. And it came to pass, when the ark set forward, that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let thine enemies be scattered, and let them that hate thee flee before thee. And when it rested, he said, Return, O Lord, unto the many thousands of Israel. Chapter 11 
and when the people complained it displeased the lord and the lord heard it and his anger was kindled and the fire of the lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp and the people cried unto moses and when moses prayed unto the lord the fire was quenched and he called the name of the place taborah because the fire of the lord burnt among them and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting and the children of israel also wept again and said who shall give us flesh to eat we remember the fish which we did eat in egypt freely the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic but now our soul is dried away there is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes and the manna was as coriander seed and the colour thereof as the colour of bdellium and the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it and the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil and when the dew fell upon the camp in the night the manna fell upon it then moses heard the people weep throughout their families every man in the door of his tent and the anger of the lord was kindled greatly moses also was displeased and moses said unto the lord wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant and wherefore have i not found favour in thy sight as thou layest the burden of all this people upon me have i conceived all this people have i begotten them that thou shouldst say unto me carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers whence should i have flesh to give unto all this people for they weep unto me saying give us flesh that we may eat i am not able to bear all this people alone because it is too heavy for me and if thou deal thus with me kill me i pray thee out of hand if i have found favour in thy sight and let me not see my wretchedness and the lord said unto moses gather unto me seventy men of the elders of israel whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee and i will come down and talk with thee there and i will take of the spirit which is upon thee and will put it upon them and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone and say thou unto the people sanctify yourselves against to-morrow and ye shall eat flesh for ye have wept in the ears of the lord saying who shall give us flesh to eat for it was well with us in egypt therefore the lord will give you flesh and ye shall eat ye shall not eat it one day nor two days nor five days neither ten days nor twenty days but even a whole month until it come out at your nostrils and it be loathsome unto you because that ye have despised the lord which is among you and have wept before him saying why came we forth out of egypt and moses said the people among whom i am are six hundred thousand footmen and thou hast said i will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffice them or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered for them to suffice them and the lord said unto moses is the lord's hand waxed short thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not and moses went out and told the people the words of the lord and they gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle and the lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him 
and took of the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp, and there ran a young man, and told Moses, and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My lord Moses, forbid them. And Moses said unto him, Enviest thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them? And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten omers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. And he called the name of that place Kibroth Hativa, because there they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibroth Hativa unto Hazeroth, and abode at Hazeroth. Chapter 12 And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses, because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek, above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam. Come out, ye three, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and, behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and, behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. 
and Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days. And the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people removed from Hazeroth, and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Chapter 13 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And these were their names. Of the tribe of Reuben, Shemua, the son of Zechur. Of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Horai. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Of the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia, the son of Nun. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Paltai, the son of Raphu. Of the tribe of Zebulun, Gadil, the son of Sodai. Of the tribe of Joseph, namely of the tribe of Manasseh, Gadai, the son of Susai. Of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali. Of the tribe of Asher, Sethur, the son of Michael. Of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabai, the son of Vafsai. Of the tribe of Gad, Geuel, the son of Mekai. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get you up this way, southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So they went up, and searched the land, from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south, and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol, and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the Brook Eshcol, because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching up the land after forty days. And they went, and came to Moses, and to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation and shewed them the fruit of the land. And they told him, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And, moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. 
and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses, and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Chapter 14 And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land, to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said to one another, Let us make a captain, and let us return into Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we have passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land, and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me for all the signs which I have shewed among them? I will smite them with the pestilence, and disinherit them, and will make of thee a greater nation, and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thou goest before them, by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all these people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Lord be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying, The Lord is long-suffering, and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children, unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of this people, according to the greatness of thy mercy. And as thou hast forgiven this people, from Egypt until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned, according to thy word. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory, and my miracles, which I did in Egypt, and in the wilderness, 
and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and hath followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereinto he went, and his seed shall possess it. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you, and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation, which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in mine ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land, concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms, until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days in which ye searched the land, even forty days, each day for a year shall ye bear your iniquities, even forty years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned, and made all the congregation to murmur against him, by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to search the land, lived still. And Moses told these sayings unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning, and get them up into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we be here, and will go up unto the place which the Lord hath promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of the Lord? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from the Lord. Therefore the Lord will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them, even unto Hormah. Chapter 15 and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, or a sacrifice, in performing a vow, or in a free will offering, or in your solemn feasts, to make a sweet savour unto the Lord, of the herd, or of the flock, 
then shall he that offereth his offering unto the lord bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour mingled with the fourth part of an hin of oil and the fourth part of an hin of wine for a drink offering shalt thou prepare with the burnt offering or sacrifice for one lamb or for a ram thou shalt prepare for a meat offering two tenth deals of flour mingled with the third part of an hin of oil and for a drink offering thou shalt offer the third part of an hin of wine for a sweet savour unto the lord and when thou preparest a bullock for a burnt offering or for a sacrifice in performing a vow or peace offerings unto the lord then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering of three tenth deals of flour mingled with half an hin of oil and thou shalt bring for a drink offering half an hin of wine for an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the lord thus shall it be done for one bullock or for one ram or for a lamb or a kid according to the number that ye shall prepare so shall ye do to every one according to their number all that are born of the country shall do these things after this manner in offering an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the lord and if a stranger sojourn with you or whomsoever be among you in your generations and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savour unto the lord as ye do so he shall do one ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you an ordinance for ever in your generations as ye are so shall the stranger be before the lord one law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you and the lord spake unto moses saying speak unto the children of israel and say unto them when ye come into the land whither i bring you then it shall be that when ye eat of the bread of the land ye shall offer up an heave offering unto the lord ye shall offer up a cake of the first of your dough for an heave offering as ye do the heave offering of the threshing floor so shall ye heave it of the first of your dough ye shall give unto the lord an heave offering in your generations and if ye have erred and not observed all these commandments which the lord hath spoken unto moses even all that the lord hath commanded you by the hand of moses from the day that the lord commanded moses and henceforward among your generations then it shall be if aught be committed by ignorance without the knowledge of the congregation that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the lord with his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner and one kid of the goats for a sin offering and the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of israel and it shall be forgiven them for it is ignorance and they shall bring their offering a sacrifice made by fire unto the lord and their sin offering before the lord for their ignorance and it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of israel and the stranger that sojourneth among them seeing all the people were in ignorance and if any soul sin through ignorance then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering and the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly when he sinneth by ignorance before the lord to make an atonement for him and it shall be forgiven him ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance both for him that is born among the children of israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them but the soul that doeth aught presumptuously whether he be born in the land or a stranger the same reproacheth the lord and that soul shall be cut off from among his people because he hath despised the word of the lord and hath broken his commandment that soul shall utterly be cut off his iniquity shall be upon him and while the children of israel were in the wilderness they found a man that gathered sticks upon the sabbath day 
and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron, and unto all the congregation. And they put him in ward, because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall be surely put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp, and stoned him with stones, and he died, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue, and it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, that ye seek not after your own heart, and your own eyes, after which ye use to go a-whoring, that ye may remember, and do all my commandments, and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt, to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Chapter 16 Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses, with certain of the children of Israel, two hundred and fifty princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses, and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face, and he spake unto Korah, and unto all his company, saying, even to-morrow the Lord will shew who are his, and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. This do. Take you censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord to-morrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. And Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, ye sons of Levi. Seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel hath separated you from the congregation of Israel, to bring you near to himself? to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord, and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye the priesthood also, for which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey, to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards? Wilt thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth, and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have I hurt one of them. And Moses said unto Korah, be thou and all thy company before the Lord, 
thou and they and Aaron, to-morrow, and take every man his censer, and put incense in them, and bring ye before the Lord every man his censer, two hundred and fifty censers, thou also, and Aaron, each of you his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. And they fell upon their faces, and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out, and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up, and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. They, and all that appertained to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, that he take up the censers out of the burning, and scatter thou the fire yonder, for they are hallowed. The censers of these sinners against their own souls, let them make them broad plates for a covering of the altar, for they offered them before the Lord, therefore they are hallowed, and they shall be a sign unto the children of Israel. And Eleazar the priest took the brazen censers, wherewith they that were burnt had offered, and they were made broad plates for a covering of the altar, to be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger, which is not of the seed of Aaron, come near to offer incense before the Lord, that he be not as Korah, and as his company, as the Lord said to him by the hand of Moses. But on the morrow all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, saying, 
ye have killed the people of the Lord. And it came to pass, when the congregation was gathered against Moses and against Aaron, that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation, and, behold, the cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took, as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation. And, behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense, and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were fourteen thousand and seven hundred, beside them that died about the matter of Korah. Chapter 17 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation, before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass, that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod apiece, for each prince one, according to their fathers' houses, even twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and, behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds, and bloomed blossoms, and yielded almonds. And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. And they looked, and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony, to be kept for a token against the rebels, and thou shalt quite take away their murmurings from me, that they die not. And Moses did so. As the Lord commanded him, so did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold! We die, we perish, we all perish. Whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? Chapter 18 And the Lord said unto Aaron, Thou and thy sons and thy father's house with thee shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. And thou and thy sons with thee shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. And thy brethren also of the tribe of Levi, the tribe of thy father, bring thou with thee, that they may be joined unto thee, and minister unto thee. But thou and thy sons with thee shall minister before the tabernacle of witness. And they shall keep thy charge, 
and the charge of all the tabernacle. Only they shall not come nigh the vessels of the sanctuary and the altar, that neither they nor ye also die. And they shall be joined unto thee, and keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation for all the service of the tabernacle. And a stranger shall not come nigh unto you. And ye shall keep the charge of the sanctuary, and the charge of the altar, that there be no wrath any more upon the children of Israel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel. To you they are given as a gift for the Lord, to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Therefore thou, and thy sons with thee, shall keep your priest's office for everything of the altar, and within the veil, and ye shall serve. I have given your priest's office unto you as a service of gift, and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of mine heave offerings, of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to thy sons by an ordinance for ever. This shall be thine of the most holy things, reserved from the fire. Every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, and every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for thee and for thy sons. In the most holy place shalt thou eat it, Every male shall eat it. It shall be holy unto thee. All this is thine, the heave offering of their gift, with all the wave offerings of the children of Israel. I have given them unto thee, and to thy sons, and to thy daughters with thee, by a statute, for ever. Every one that is clean in thy house shall eat of it. All the best of the oil, and all the best of the wine, and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto the Lord, them have I given thee. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto the Lord, shall be thine. Every one that is clean in thine house shall eat of it. Everything devoted in Israel shall be thine. Everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto the Lord, whether it be of men or beasts, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shalt thou surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beasts shalt thou redeem. And those that are to be redeemed from a month old shalt thou redeem, according to thine estimation, for the money of five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty garas. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, and shall burn their fat for an offering, made by fire, for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the flesh of them shall be thine, as the wave-breast and as the right shoulder are thine. All the heave offerings of the holy things which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord, have I given thee, and thy sons and thy daughters with thee, by a statute for ever. It is a covenant of salt for ever before the Lord unto thee, and to thy seed with thee. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part, and thine inheritance, among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service, which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. 
but the levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation and they shall bear their iniquity it shall be a statute for ever throughout your generations that among the children of israel they have no inheritance but the tithes of the children of israel which they offer as an heave offering unto the lord i have given to the levites to inherit therefore i have said unto them among the children of israel they shall have no inheritance and the lord spake unto moses saying thus speak unto the levites and say unto them when ye take of the children of israel the tithes which i have given you from them for your inheritance then ye shall offer up an heave offering of it for the lord even a tenth part of the tithe and this your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the winepress thus ye also shall offer an heave offering unto the lord of all your tithes which ye receive of the children of israel and ye shall give thereof the lord's heave offering to aaron the priest out of all your gifts ye shall offer every heave offering of the lord of all the best thereof even the hallowed part thereof out of it therefore thou shalt say unto them when ye have heaved the best thereof from it then it shall be counted unto the levites as the increase of the threshing floor and as the increase of the winepress and ye shall eat it in every place ye and your households for it is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the congregation and ye shall bear no sin by reason of it when ye have heaved from it the best of it neither shall ye pollute the holy things of the children of israel lest ye die chapter nineteen and the lord spake unto moses and unto aaron saying this is the ordinance of the law which the lord hath commanded saying speak unto the children of israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot wherein there is no blemish and upon which never came yoke and ye shall give her unto eleazar the priest that he may bring her forth without the camp and one shall slay her before his face and eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times and one shall burn the heifer in his sight her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall he burn and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer then the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be unclean until the even and he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean until the even and a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of israel for a water of separation it is a purification for sin and he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even and it shall be unto the children of israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statute for ever he that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days he shall purify himself with it on the third day and on the seventh day he shall be clean but if he purify not himself the third day then the seventh day he shall not be clean whosoever toucheth the dead body of any man that is dead and purifieth not himself defileth the tabernacle of the lord and that soul shall be cut off from israel because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him he shall be unclean his uncleanness is yet upon him 
this is the law when a man dieth in a tent all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days and every open vessel which hath no covering bound upon it is unclean and whosoever toucheth one that is slain with a sword in the open fields or a dead body or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days and for an unclean person they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin and running water shall be put thereto in a vessel and a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon all the vessels and upon the persons that were there and upon him that touched a bone or one slain or one dead or a grave and the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day and on the seventh day he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at even but the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation because he hath defiled the sanctuary of the lord the water of separation hath not been sprinkled upon him he is unclean and it shall be a perpetual statute unto them that he that sprinkleth the water of separation shall wash his clothes and he that toucheth the water of separation shall be unclean until even and whatsoever the unclean person toucheth shall be unclean and the soul that toucheth it shall be unclean until even chapter twenty then came the children of israel even the whole congregation into the desert of zin in the first month and the people abode in kadesh and miriam died there and was buried there and there was no water for the congregation and they gathered themselves together against moses and against aaron and the people chode with moses and spake saying would god that we had died when our brethren died before the lord and why have ye brought up the congregation of the lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die there and wherefore have ye made us to come out of egypt to bring us in unto this evil place it is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates neither is there any water to drink and moses and aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and they fell upon their faces and the glory of the lord appeared unto them and the lord spake unto moses saying take the rod and gather thou the assembly together thou and aaron thy brother and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes and it shall give forth his water and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock so thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink and moses took the rod from before the lord as he commanded him and moses and aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and he said unto them hear now ye rebels must we fetch you water out of this rock and moses lifted up his hand and with his rod he smote the rock twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank and their beasts also and the lord spake unto moses and aaron because ye believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of israel therefore ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which i have given them this is the water of meribah because the children of israel strove with the lord and he was sanctified in them 
and Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus saith thy brother Israel, Thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us, how our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto the Lord, he heard our voice, and sent an angel, and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And, behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed thy borders. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with the sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. Edom came out against him with much people, and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border, wherefore Israel turned away from him. And the children of Israel, even the whole congregation, journeyed from Kadesh, and came unto Mount Hor. And the children spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor, by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because ye rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up unto Mount Hor, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moses did as the Lord commanded. And they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mount, and when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Israel. End of section 14section fifteen of the holy bible the king james version numbers chapters twenty one to thirty this librivox recording is in the public domain the recording by michael armenta chapter twenty one and when king arid the canaanite which dwelt in the south heard tell that israel came by the way of the spies then he fought against Israel, and took some of them prisoners. And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord, and said, If thou wilt indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel, and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities and he called the name of the place Horma. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, 
and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. And the children of Israel set forward, and pitched in Oboth. And they journeyed from Oboth, and pitched in Ajiabarim, in the wilderness which is before Moab, toward the sun rising. From thence they removed, and pitched in the valley of Zared. From thence they removed, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that cometh out of the coasts of the Amorites. For Arnon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. Wherefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord, what he did in the Red Sea, and in the brooks of Arnon, and at the stream of the brooks that goeth down to the dwelling of Ar, and lieth upon the border of Moab. And from thence they went to Beer. That is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. The princes digged the well. The nobles of the people digged it, by the direction of the lawgiver, with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matena and from Matena to Nahalil, and from Nahalil to Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley, that is, in the country of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looketh toward Jeshimon. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, We will not drink of the waters of the well, but we will go along by the king's highway, until we be past thy borders. And Sihon would not suffer Israel to pass through his border. But Sihon gathered all his people together, and went out against Israel into the wilderness. And he came to Jahaz, and fought against Israel. And Israel smote him with the edge of the sword, and possessed his land, from Arnon unto Jabok even unto the children of Ammon, for the border of the children of Ammon was strong. And Israel took all these cities. And Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon, and in all the villages thereof. For Heshbon was the city of Sihon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab, and taken all his land out of his hand, even unto Arnon. Wherefore they that speak in Proverbs say, Come into Heshbon, let the city of Sihon be built and prepared, for there is a fire gone out of Heshbon, a flame from the city of Sihon. It hath consumed Ar of Moab, and the lords of the high places of Arnon. Woe to thee, Moab! Thou art undone, O people of Chemosh. He hath given his sons that escaped, and his daughters, into captivity, unto Sihon, king of the Amorites. We have shot at them. Heshbon is perished, even unto Dibon, and we have laid them waste, even unto Nopha, which reacheth unto Mediba. 
Thus Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. And Moses sent to spy out Jazer, and they took the villages thereof, and drove out the Amorites that were there. And they turned and went up by the way of Bashan. And Og, the king of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to the battle at Idre. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand, and all his people, and his land. And thou shalt do to him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So they smote him, and his sons, and all his people, until there was none left him alive and they possessed his land. Chapter 22 And the children of Israel set forward, and pitched in the plains of Moab, on this side Jordan, by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was sore afraid of the people, because there were many and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pithor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I wot that he whom thou blessest is blessed, and he whom thou cursest is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed, with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam, and spake unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you word again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. And God came unto Balaam, and said, What men are these with thee? And Balaam said unto God, Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, hath said unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Egypt, which covereth the face of the earth. Come now, curse me, them. Peradventure I shall be able to overcome them, and drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went unto Balak, and said, Balaam refuseth to come with us. And Balak sent yet again princes, more and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam, and said to him, Thus saith Balak, the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I pray thee, hinder thee from coming unto me. For I will promote thee unto very great honour, and I will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come, therefore, I pray thee, curse me this people. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord, my God, to do less or more. 
Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry ye also here this night, that I may know what the Lord will say unto me more. And God came unto Balaam at night, and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up, and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning, and saddled his ass, and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass, and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out of the way, and went into the field, and Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side, and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself unto the wall, and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. And he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further, and stood in a narrow place, where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam. And Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee, that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in mine hand, for now would I kill thee. And the ass said unto Balaam, Am I not thine ass, upon which thou hast ridden me ever since I was thine unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand. And he bowed down his head, and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and turned from me these three times. Unless she had turned from me, Surely now also I had slain thee, and saved her alive. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displease thee, I will get me back again. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, Go with the men. But only the word that I shall speak unto thee, that thou shalt speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. And when Balak heard that Balaam was come, he went out to meet him unto a city of Moab, which is in the border of Arnon, which is in the utmost coast. And Balak said unto Balaam, did I not earnestly send unto thee to call thee? Wherefore camest thou not unto me? Am I not able indeed to promote thee to honour? And Balaam said unto Balak, Lo, I am come unto thee. Have I now any power at all to say anything? The word that God putteth in my mouth, that shall I speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came unto Ker Jathazoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and sent to Balaam, and to the princes that were with him. And it came to pass, on the morrow, that Balak took Balaam, 
and brought him up into the high places of bow that thence he might see the utmost part of the people chapter twenty three and balaam said unto balak build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams and balak did as balaam had spoken and balak and balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram and balaam said unto balak stand by thy burnt offering and i will go peradventure the lord will come to meet me and whatsoever he sheweth me i will tell thee and he went to an high place and god met balaam and he said unto him i have prepared seven altars and i have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram and the lord put a word in balaam's mouth and said return unto balak and thus thou shalt speak and he returned unto him and lo he stood by his burnt offering he and all the princes of moab and he took up his parable and said balak the king of moab hath brought me from aram out of the mountains of the east saying come curse me jacob and come defy israel how shall i curse whom god hath not cursed or how shall i defy whom the lord hath not defied for from the top of the rocks i see him and from the hills i behold him lo the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations who can count the dust of jacob and the number of the fourth part of israel let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his and balak said unto balaam what hast thou done unto me i took thee to curse mine enemies and behold thou hast blessed them altogether and he answered and said must i not take heed to speak that which the lord hath put in my mouth and balak said unto him come i pray thee with me unto another place from whence thou mayst see them thou shalt see but the utmost part of them and shalt not see them all and curse me from thence and he brought him unto the fields of zophim to the top of pisgah and built seven altars and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar and he said unto balak stand here by the burnt offering while i meet the lord yonder and the lord met balaam and put a word in his mouth and said go again unto balak and say thus and when he came to him behold he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of moab with him and balak said unto him what hath the lord spoken and he took up his parable and said rise up balak and hear hearken unto me thou son of zippor god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good behold i have received commandment to bless and he hath blessed and i cannot reverse it he hath not beheld iniquity in jacob neither hath he seen perverseness in israel the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, 
it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Behold, the people shall rise up as a great lion, and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey, and drink the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Balaam answered and said unto Balak, Told not I thee, saying, All that the Lord speaketh, that I must do? And Balak said unto Balaam, Come, I pray thee, I will bring thee unto another place. Peradventure it will please God that thou mayest curse me, them, from thence. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor, that looketh toward Jeshimon. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Chapter 24 And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to seek for enchantments, but he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he took up his parable, and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, He hath said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob, and thy tabernacles, O Israel! As the valleys are, they spread forth, as gardens by the river's side, as the trees of line aloes, which the Lord hath planted, and as cedar trees beside the waters. He shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters, and his king shall be higher than Agag, and his kingdom shall be exalted. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones, and pierce them through with his arrows. He couched, he lay down, as a lion, and as a great lion. Who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesseth thee, and cursed is he that curseth thee. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse mine enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honour, but, lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honour. And Balaam said unto Balak, Spake I not also to thy messengers, which thou sentest unto me, saying, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of mine own mind, but what the Lord saith, that will I speak. And now, behold, I go unto my people. Come, therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. And he took up his parable, and said, Balaam, the son of Beor, hath said, and the man whose eyes are open hath said, he hath said, which heard the words of God, and knew the knowledge of the Most High, 
which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth, and Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable, and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish for ever. And he looked on the Kenites, and took up his parable, and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Kenite shall be wasted, until Ashur shall carry thee away captive. And he took up his parable, and said, Alas, who shall live when God doeth this? And ships shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Ashur, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish for ever. And Balaam rose up, and went and returned to his place. And Balak also went his way. Chapter 25 And Israel abode in Shittim. And the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat, and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people, and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And, behold, one of the children of Israel came, and brought unto his brethren a Midianitish woman, in the sight of Moses, and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And when Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation, and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent, and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman, through her belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. Wherefore, say, Behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace, and he shall have it, and his seed after him, even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Selu, a prince of a chief house among the Simeonites. 
and the name of the Midianitish woman that was slain was Kozbai, the daughter of Zur. He was head over a people, and of a chief house in Midian. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites, and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, wherewith they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor, and in the matter of Kosbai, the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. Chapter 26 And it came to pass, after the plague, that the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel, from twenty years old and upward, throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. And Moses and Eliezer, the priest, spake with them in the plains of Moab, by Jordan, near Jericho, saying, Take the sum of the people, from twenty years old and upward, as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt, Reuben, the eldest son of Israel. The children of Reuben, Hanok, of which cometh the family of the Hanokites of Palu, the family of the Paluites, of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites, and they that were numbered of them were forty and three thousand and seven hundred and thirty. And the sons of Palu, Eliab, and the sons of Eliab, Nemuel, and Dathan, and Abiram. This is that Dathan and Abiram which were famous in the congregation, who strove against Moses and against Aaron in the company of Korah when they strove against the Lord. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah when that company died. What time the fire devoured two hundred and fifty men, and they became a sign. Notwithstanding, the children of Korah died not. The sons of Simeon, after their families, of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, of Janan, the family of the Jamanites, of Jachin, the family of the Jachinites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites, of Shaul, the family of the Shaulites. These are the families of the Simeonites, twenty and two thousand and two hundred. The children of Gad, after their families, of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shunai, the family of the Shunites, of Oznai, the family of the Oznites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Arod, the family of the Erodites, of Arali, the family of the Arilites. These are the families of the children of Gad, according to those that were numbered of them, forty thousand and five hundred. The sons of Judah were Er and Onan, and Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Judah, after their families, were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Pherez, the family of the Pharzites, of Zerah, the family of the Zarhites. And the sons of Pharez were of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Hamuel, the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and sixteen thousand and five hundred. Of the sons of Issachar, after their families, the family of the Tuliites, of Puah, the family of the Punites, of Jeshub, the family of the Jeshubites, of Shimron, the family of the Shimronites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore and four thousand and three hundred. Of the sons of Zebulun, after their families, of Sered, the family of the Sardites, of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Jalil, the family of the Jalilites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, according to those that were numbered of them, threescore thousand and five hundred. The sons of Joseph, after their families, were Manasseh and Ephraim. 
of the sons of Manasseh, of Machir, the family of the Machirites. And Machir begat Gilead. Of Gilead come the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead. Of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites. Of Helech, the family of the Helechites. And of Azrael, the family of the Azraelites. And of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites. And of Shemida, the family of the Shemidaites. And of Hefer, the family of the Heferites. And Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, had no sons, but daughters. And the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mela and Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirzah. These are the families of Manasseh, and those that were numbered of them, fifty and two thousand and seven hundred. These are the sons of Ephraim, after their families, of Shashthalah, the family of the Shashthalites, of Beker, the family of the Bacrites, of Tehan, the family of the Tehanites. And these are the sons of Shuthelah, of Iran, the family of the Iranites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those that were numbered of them, thirty and two thousand and five hundred. These are the sons of Joseph, after their families. The sons of Benjamin, after their families. Of Bela, the family of the Beliites. Of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites. Of Ahiram, the family of the Ahiramites. Of Shufam, the family of the Shufamites. Of Hufam, the family of the Hufamites. And the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman. Of Ard, the family of the Ardites, and of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin after their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and six hundred. These are the sons of Dan after their families, of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites. These are the families of Dan after their families. All the families of the Shuhamites according to those that were numbered of them, were threescore and four thousand and four hundred. Of the children of Asher, after their families, of Jimna, the family of the Jimnites, of Jesuai, the family of the Jesuites, of Beriah, the family of the Beriites. Of the sons of Beriah, of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Malkiel, the family of the Malkielites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. These are the families of the sons of Asher, according to those that were numbered of them, who were fifty and three thousand and four hundred. Of the sons of Naphtali, after their families, of Jezeel, the family of the Jezeelites, of Gunai, the family of the Gunites, of Jezer, the family of the Jezerites, of Shilam, the family of the Shilamites. These are the families of Naphtali, according to their families, and they that were numbered of them were forty and five thousand and four hundred. These were the numbered of the children of Israel, six hundred thousand and a thousand seven hundred and thirty. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these the land shall be divided, for an inheritance according to the number of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. And these are they that were numbered of the Levites after their families, of Gershon, the family of the Gershonites, of Kohath, the family of the Kohathites, of Merari, the family of the Merarites. These are the families of the Levites, the family of the Libnites, the family of the Hebronites, the family of the Malites, the family of the Mushites, the family of the Korthites. And Kohath begat Amram. And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Amram Aaron and Moses, 
and Miriam their sister. And unto Aaron was born Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. And Nadab and Abihu died when they offered strange fire before the Lord. And those that were numbered of them were twenty and three thousand, all males from a month old and upward, for they were not numbered among the children of Israel, because there was no inheritance given them among the children of Israel. These are they that were numbered by Moses and Eleazar the priest, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. But among these there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron the priest numbered when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. For the Lord had said of them, They shall surely die in the wilderness. And there was not left a man of them, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. Chapter 27 then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Hepher, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these are the names of his daughters, Mela, Noah, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Tirsa. And they stood before Moses, and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes, and all the congregation, by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin, and had no sons. Why should the name of our father be done away from among his family, because he hath no son? Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brethren of our father, and Moses brought their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, The daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brethren, and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. And if he have no daughter, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. And if his father have no brethren, then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsman that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into this mount Abiram, and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother was gathered. For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water before their eyes, that is, the water of Meribah in Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honour upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall ask counsel for him, after the judgment of Urim, 
before the Lord. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And he took Joshua, and set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him, and gave him a charge, as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Chapter 28 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savour unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season. And thou shalt say unto them, This is the offering made by fire, which ye shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs of the first year, without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. The one lamb shalt thou offer in the morning, and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even. And a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering, mingled with the fourth part of an hen of beaten oil. It is a continual burnt offering, which was ordained in Mount Sinai, for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hymn for one lamb. In the holy place thou shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering. And the other lamb shalt thou offer at even, as the meat offering of the morning, and as the drink offering thereof thou shalt offer it, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. Then on the Sabbath day two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and the drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath, beside the continual burnt offering, and his drink offering. And in the beginnings of your first months ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks, and one ram, seven lambs of the first year, without spot, and three tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one bullock, and two-tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one ram, and a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering unto one lamb, for a burnt offering of a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offerings shall be half an hen of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of an hen unto a ram, and a fourth part of an hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered, beside the continual burnt offering, and his drink offering. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord, and in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be unholy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks, and one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, Three-tenth deals shall ye offer for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram. A several-tenth deal shalt thou offer for every lamb, throughout the seven lambs, and one goat for a sin offering, to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily, throughout the seven days the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord. It shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day ye shall have unholy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. Also, in the day of the first fruits, when ye bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, 
after your weeks be out, ye shall have unholy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work, but ye shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals unto one bullock, two-tenth deals unto one ram, a several-tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats, to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish, and their drink offerings. Chapter 29 And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have unholy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work. It is a day of blowing the trumpets unto you. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savour unto the Lord, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals for a bullock, and two-tenth deals for a ram, and one-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, to make an atonement for you. He sighed to the burnt offering of the month, and his meat offering, and the daily burnt offering, and his meat offering, and their drink offerings, according unto their manner, for a sweet savour, a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall have, on the tenth day of this seventh month, unholy convocation, and ye shall afflict your souls. Ye shall not do any work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord for a sweet savour, one young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals to a bullock, and two-tenth deals to one ram, a several-tenth deal for one lamb throughout the seven lambs, one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the sin offering of atonement, and the continual birds offering, and the meat offering of it, and their drink offerings. But on the fifteenth day of the seventh month ye shall have unholy convocation, ye shall do no servile work, and ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. And ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savour unto the Lord, thirteen young bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year. They shall be without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil, three-tenth deals unto every bullock out of thirteen bullocks, two-tenth deals to each ram of the two rams, and a several-tenth deal to each lamb of the fourteen lambs, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering and his drink offering. And on the second day ye shall offer twelve young bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year, without spot, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and the meat offering thereof, and their drink offerings. And on the third day, eleven bullocks, two rams, fourteen lambs of the first year, without blemish, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fourth day, ten bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, without blemish, their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the fifth day, nine bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, without spot, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. 
and on the sixth day eight bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year without blemish, and their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs shall be according to their number, after the manner, and one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. And on the seventh day, seven bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs of the first year, without blemish, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings, for the bullocks, for the rams, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, his meat offering, and his drink offering. On the eighth day ye shall have a solemn assembly. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire, of a sweet savour unto the Lord. One bullock, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, without blemish. Their meat offering and their drink offerings for the bullock, for the ram, and for the lambs, shall be according to their number, after the manner. And one goat for a sin offering, beside the continual burnt offering, and his meat offering, and his drink offering. These things ye shall do unto the Lord in your set feasts, beside your vows, and your free will offerings, for your burnt offerings, and for your meat offerings, and for your drink offerings, and for your peace offerings. And Moses told the children of Israel, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. Chapter 30 And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing that the Lord hath commanded. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. If a woman also vow a vow unto the Lord, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow, and her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand, and the Lord shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. And if she had at all an husband when she vowed, or uttered aught out of her lips wherewith she bound her soul, and her husband hear it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it, then her vows shall stand, and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect, and the Lord shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow, and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. And if she vowed in her husband's house, or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her, and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows, or concerning the bond of her soul, shall not stand. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, or her husband may make it void. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establisheth all her vows, or all her bonds which are upon her. He confirmeth them, because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall any ways make them void after that he hath heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife, 
between the father and his daughter, being yet in her youth, in her father's house. End of section 15Section 16 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Numbers, chapters 31 to 36. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta. Chapter 31. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites, Afterward shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe a thousand, throughout all the tribes of Israel, shall ye send to the war. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to the war, a thousand of every tribe, them the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war, with the holy instruments, and the trumpets to blow in his hand. And they warred against the Midianites, as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males, and they slew the kings of Midian, besides the rest of them that were slain, namely, Evi, and Recham, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam also, the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of Midian captives, and their little ones, and took the spoil of all their cattle, and all their flocks, and all their goods. And they burnt all the cities wherein they dwelt, and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil, and all the prey, both of men and beasts. And they brought the captives, and the prey, and the spoil, unto Moses, and Eleazar the priest, and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses was wroth with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have ye saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel, through the counsel of Balaam, to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. And there was a plague among the congregation of the Lord. Now therefore kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But all the women, children, that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. And do ye abide without the camp seven days. Whosoever hath killed any person, and whosoever hath touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives, on the third day and on the seventh day. And purify all your raiment, and all that is made of skins, and all work of goat's hair, and all things made of wood. And Eleazar the priest said unto the men of war, which went to the battle, This is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold, and the silver, and the brass, the iron, the tin, and the lead, every thing that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Nevertheless it shall be purified with the water of separation. And all that abideth not the fire ye shall make go through the water. And ye shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and ye shall be clean. 
and afterward ye shall come into the camp. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of man and of beast, thou and Eleazar the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts, between them that took the war upon them, who went out to battle, and between all the congregation, and levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war which went out to battle, one soul of five hundred, both of the persons, and of the beeves, and of the asses, and of the sheep. Take it of their half, and give it unto Eleazar the priest for an heave offering of the Lord. And the children of Israel's half, thou shalt take one portion of fifty of the persons, of the beeves, of the asses, and of the flocks, of all manner of beasts, and give them unto the Levites, which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the booty, being the rest of the prey which the men of war had caught, was six hundred thousand and seventy thousand and five hundred sheep, and threescore and twelve thousand beeves, and threescore and one thousand asses, and thirty and two thousand persons in all, of women that had not known man by lying with him. And the half which was the portion of them that went out to war was in number three hundred thousand and seven and thirty thousand and five hundred sheep. And the Lord's tribute of the sheep was six hundred and threescore and fifteen. And the beeves were thirty and six thousand, of which the Lord's tribute was threescore and twelve. And the asses were thirty thousand and five hundred, of which the Lord's tribute was threescore and one. And all the persons were sixteen thousands, of which the Lord's tribute was thirty and two persons. And Moses gave the tribute, which was the Lord's heave offering, unto Eleazar the priest, as the Lord commanded Moses. And of the children of Israel's half, which Moses divided from the men that warred, now the half that pertained unto the congregation were three hundred thousand and thirty thousand and seven thousand and five hundred sheep, and thirty and six thousand beeves, and thirty thousand asses, and five hundred and sixteen thousand persons. Even of the children of Israel's half, Moses took one portion of fifty, both of man and beast, and gave them unto the Levites which kept the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. And the officers, which were over thousands of the host, the captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, came near unto Moses. And they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war, which are under our charge, and there lacketh not one man of us, we have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord, what every man hath gotten, of jewels, of gold, chains and bracelets, rings, earrings, and tablets, to make an atonement for our souls before the Lord. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels, and all the gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord, of the captains of thousands, and of the captains of hundreds, was sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty shekels. For the men of war had taken spoil, every man for himself. And Moses and Eleazar the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation, for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Chapter 32 Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that, behold, the place was a place for cattle, 
the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses, and to Eliezer the priest, and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Ataroth and Dibon and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Eliela and Shebam and Nebo and Baon. Even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. And Moses said unto the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war? And shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? Thus did your fathers when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up unto the valley of Eshcol and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord had given them. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time, and he sware, saying, Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt, from twenty years old and upward, shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite, and Joshua the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness forty years, until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. And, behold, ye are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men, to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel? For if ye turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness, and ye shall destroy all this people. And they came near unto him, and said, We will build sheepfolds here for our cattle, and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Israel, until we have brought them unto their place, and our little ones shall dwell in the fenced cities, because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side, Jordan, or forward, because our inheritance is fallen to us on this side, Jordan, eastward. And Moses said unto them, If ye will do this thing, if ye will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go, all of you, armed over Jordan before the Lord, until he hath driven out his enemies from before him, and the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return, and be guiltless before the Lord, and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye will not do so, Behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Build your cities for your little ones, and folds for your sheep, and do that which hath proceeded out of your mouth. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commandeth. Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilead. But thy servants will pass over, every man armed for war, before the Lord to battle, as my Lord saith. So, concerning them, Moses commanded Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass with you over Jordan, every man armed to battle before the Lord, and the land shall be subdued before you, 
then ye shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. But if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As the Lord hath said unto thy servants, so we will do. We will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan, that the possession of our inheritance on this side Jordan may be ours. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad, and to the children of Reuben, and unto half the tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land with the cities thereof, in the coasts, even the cities of the country round about. And the children of Gad built Dibon, and Ataroth, and Aror, and Atroth, and Shophan, and Jazer, and Jugbeha, and Beth Nimrah, and Beth Haran, fenced cities, and folds for sheep. And the children of Reuben built Heshbon, and Eliela, and Kirjathaim, and Nebo, and Balmion, their names being changed, and Shibma, and gave other names unto the cities which they builded. And the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead, and took it, and dispossessed the Amorite. And Moses gave Gilead unto Machir, the son of Manasseh, and he dwelt therein. And Jair, the son of Manasseh, went, and took the small towns thereof, and called them Havoth Jair. And Noba went, and took Kenath, and the villages thereof, and called it Noba, after his own name. Chapter 33 These are the journeys of the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt, with their armies, under the hand of Moses and Aaron. And Moses wrote their goings out, according to their journeys, by the commandment of the Lord. And these are their journeys, according to their goings out. And they departed from Ramses in the first month, on the fifteenth day of the first month. On the morrow after the Passover, the children of Israel went out with an high hand in the sight of all the Egyptians. For the Egyptians buried all their firstborn, which the Lord had smitten among them. Upon their gods also the Lord executed judgments. And the children of Israel removed from Ramesses, and pitched in Succoth. And they departed from Succoth, and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham, and turned again to Pi-Hira. And the children of Israel removed from Ramesses, and pitched in Succoth. And they departed from Succoth, and pitched in Etham, which is in the edge of the wilderness. And they removed from Etham, and turned again unto Paheharath, which is before Baal-Zephon. And they pitched before Migdol. And they departed from before Paheharath, and passed through the midst of the sea into the wilderness, and went three days' journey in the wilderness of Etham, and pitched in Mara. And they removed from Mara, and came unto Elam. And in Elam were twelve fountains of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they pitched there. And they removed from Elam, and encamped by the Red Sea. And they removed from the Red Sea, and encamped in the wilderness of Sin. And they took their journey out of the wilderness of Sin, and encamped in Dovka. And they departed from Dovka, and encamped at Elush. And they removed from Elush, and encamped at Rephidim, where was no water for the people to drink. And they departed from Rephidim, and pitched in the wilderness of Sinai. And they removed from the desert of Sinai, and pitched at Kibroth Hatteva. And they departed from Kibroth Hatteva, and encamped at Hazeroth. And they departed from Hazeroth, and pitched in Rithma. And they departed from Rithma, and pitched at Rimon Peres. And they departed from Rimon Peres, and pitched in Libna. 
and they removed from Leibna and pitched at Risa, and they journeyed from Risa and pitched in Kihelitha, and they went from Kihelitha and pitched in Mount Shafer, and they removed from Mount Shafer and encamped in Hadera, and they removed from Hadera and pitched in Machaloth, and they removed from Machaloth and encamped at Tehath, and they departed from Tehath and pitched at Tara, and they removed from Tara and pitched in Mithka, and they went from Mithka and pitched in Hashmona, and they departed from Hashmona and encamped at Moseroth, and they departed from Moseroth and pitched in Benajakan, and they removed from Benajakan and encamped at Horhagadad, and they went from Horhagadad and pitched in Jotbatha, and they removed from Jotbatha and encamped at Abrona. And they departed from Abrona and encamped at Aziongaber. And they removed from Aziongaber and pitched in the wilderness of the Zin, which is Kadesh. And they removed from Kadesh and pitched in Mount Hor, in the edge of the land of Edom. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord, and died there. In the fortieth year, after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the first day of the fifth month. And Aaron was an hundred and twenty and three years old when he died in Mount Hor. And King Arad, the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. And Aaron the priest went up into Mount Hor at the commandment of the Lord, and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the first day of the fifth month. And Aaron was an hundred and twenty and three years old when he died in Mount Hor. And King Aaron the Canaanite, which dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard of the coming of the children of Israel. And they departed from Mount Hor and pitched in Zalmona, and they departed from Zalmona and pitched in Punan. And they departed from Punan and pitched in Obath. And they departed from Obath and pitched in Ejiabaran, in the border of Moab. And they departed from Aim and pitched in Dibangad. And they removed from Dibangad and encamped in Almon de Blatheum. And they removed from Almon de Blatheum and pitched in the mountains of Abarim before Nebo. And they departed from the mountains of Abarim, and pitched in the plains of Moab by Jordan, near Jericho. And they pitched by Jordan from beth Jesimoth even unto abel in the plains of Moab. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan, near Jericho, saying, When ye are passed over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places. And ye shall dispossess the inhabitants of the land, and dwell therein, for I have given you the land to possess it. And ye shall divide the land by lot for an inheritance among your families, and to the more ye shall give the more inheritance, and to the fewer ye shall give the less inheritance. Every man's inheritance shall be in the place where his lot falleth, according to the tribes of your fathers ye shall inherit. But if ye will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which ye let remain of them shall be pricks in your eyes, and thorns in your sides, and shall vex you in the land wherein ye dwell. Moreover, it shall come to pass that I shall do unto you, as I thought to do unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall unto you for an inheritance, even the land of Canaan, with the coasts thereof. Then your south quarter shall be from the wilderness of Zin, along by the coast of Edom, and your south border shall be the utmost coast of the salt sea eastward. And your border shall turn from the south to the ascent of Akribim, 
and pass on to Zin, and the going forth thereof shall be from the south to Kadesh Barnea, and shall go on to Hazaradur, and pass on to Asmon. And the border shall fetch a compass from Asmon unto the river of Egypt, and the goings out of it shall be at the sea. And as for the western border, ye shall even have the great sea for a border. This shall be your west border. And this shall be your north border. From the great sea ye shall point out for you Mount Hor. From Mount Hor ye shall point out your border unto the entrance of Hamath, and the goings forth of the border shall be to Zedad. And the border shall go on to Ziphron, and the goings out of it shall be at Hazarinan. This shall be your north border. And ye shall point out your east border from Hazarinan to Shepham, and the coast shall go down from Shepham to Ribla on the east side of Ain. And the border shall descend, and shall reach unto the side of the sea of Chinnereth eastward. And the border shall go down to Jordan, and the goings out of it shall be at the Salt Sea. This shall be your land, with the coasts thereof round about. And Moses commanded the children of Israel, saying, This is the land which ye shall inherit by lot, which the Lord commanded to give unto the nine tribes, and to the half-tribe, to the tribe of the children of Reuben, according to the house of their fathers, and the tribe of the children of Gad, according to the house of their fathers, have ye received their inheritance, and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance. The two tribes and the half-tribe have received their inheritance on this side, Jordan, near Jericho, eastward, toward the sun rising. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, These are the names of the men which shall divide the land unto you, Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun. And ye shall take one prince of every tribe to divide the land by inheritance. And the names of the men are these. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. And of the tribe of the children of Simeon, Shemuel, the son of Amihud. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Elided, the son of Chislon. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Dan, Bukai, the son of Joglai. The prince of the children of Joseph, for the tribe of the children of Manasseh, Haniel, the son of Ephod. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, Kemuel, the son of Shiftan. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Zebulun, Elizaphan, the son of Parnach. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Issachar, Paltiel, the son of Azan. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Asher, Ahidud, the son of Shalomai. And the prince of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, Pedahel, the son of Amihud. These are they whom the Lord commanded to divide the inheritance unto the children of Israel in the land of Canaan. Chapter 35 And the Lord spake unto Moses in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho, saying, Command the children of Israel that they give unto the Levites of the inheritance of their possession cities to dwell in, and ye shall give also unto the Levites suburbs for the cities round about them. And the cities shall they have to dwell in, and the suburbs of them shall be for their cattle, and for their goods, and for all their beasts. And the suburbs of the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites shall reach from the wall of the city, and outward a thousand cubits round about. And ye shall measure from without the city, on the east side two thousand cubits, and on the south side two thousand cubits, and on the west side two thousand cubits, and on the north side two thousand cubits, and the city shall be in the midst. This shall be to them the suburbs of the cities, and among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites there shall be six cities for refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither, and to them ye shall add forty and two cities. So all the cities which ye shall give to the Levites shall be forty and eight cities. Them shall ye give with their suburbs. 
and the cities which he shall give shall be of the possession of the children of Israel. From them that have many ye shall give many, but from them that have few ye shall give few. Every one shall give of his cities unto the Levites, according to his inheritance, which he inherited. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come over Jordan into the land of Canaan, then ye shall appoint you cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the slayer may flee thither, which killeth any person at unawares. And they shall be unto you cities for refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer die not until he stand before the congregation in judgment. And of these cities which ye shall give, six cities shall ye have for refuge. Ye shall give three cities on this side Jordan, and three cities shall ye give in the land of Canaan, which shall be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be a refuge, both for the children of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that every one that killeth any person unawares may flee thither. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Or if he smite him with an hand weapon of wood, wherewith he may die, and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The revenger of blood himself shall slay the murderer. When he meeteth him, he shall slay him. But if he thrust him of hatred, or hurl at him by laying of weight that he die, or in enmity smite him with his hand that he die, he that smote him shall surely be put to death, for he is a murderer. The revenger of blood shall slay the murderer when he meeteth him. But if he thrust him suddenly without enmity, or have cast upon him anything without laying of weight, or with any stone wherewith a man may die, seeing him not, and cast it upon him that he die, and was not his enemy, neither sought his harm, then the congregation shall judge between the slayer and the revenger of blood according to these judgments. And the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood, and the congregation shall deliver the slayer out of the hand of the revenger of blood, and the congregation shall restore him to the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and he shall abide in it unto the death of the high priest, which was anointed with the holy oil. But if the slayer shall at any time come without the border of the city of his refuge, whither he was fled, and the revenger of blood find him without the borders of the city of his refuge, and the revenger of blood kill the slayer, he shall not be guilty of blood, because he should have remained in the city of his refuge until the death of the high priest. But after the death of the high priest, the slayer shall return unto the land of his possession. So these things shall be for a statute of judgment unto you, throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by the mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause him to die. Moreover, ye shall take no satisfaction for the life of a murderer, which is guilty of death, but he shall be surely put to death. And ye shall take no satisfaction for him that is fled to the city of his refuge, that he should come again to dwell in the land, until the death of the priest. So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are. For blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Defile not, therefore, the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, dwell among the children of Israel. Chapter 36 And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, 
the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, came near and spake before Moses and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. And they said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers, and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, The tribe of the sons of Joseph hath said well, This is the thing which the Lord doth command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. And every daughter that possesseth an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. For Mela, Tirzah, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married into the families of the sons of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. End of section 16 Section 17 of The Holy Bible the King James Version. Deuteronomy chapters 1 to 11. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea between Paran and Tophel, and Laban, and Hazaroth, and Tisahab. There are eleven days' journey from Horeb, by the way of Mount Seir, unto Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass, in the fortieth year, in the eleventh month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spake unto the children of Israel, according unto all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. After he had slain Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt at Astaroth in Idre, on this side Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. Turn you, and take your journey, and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh thereunto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land, which the Lord sware unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, 
I am not able to bear you myself alone. The Lord your God hath multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you, as he hath promised you. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance, and your burden, and your strife? Take you wise men, and understanding, and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And he answered me, and said, The thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. So I took the chiefs of your tribes, wise men, and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother, and the stranger that is with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which ye should do. And when ye departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which ye saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as the Lord commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, Ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land, and bring us word again by what way we must go up, and into what cities we shall come. And the saying pleased me well. And I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. And they turned and went up into the mountain, and came unto the valley of Eshcol, and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands, and brought it down unto us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God doth give us. Notwithstanding, ye would not go up, but rebelled against the commandments of the Lord your God. And ye murmured in your tents, and said, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us. Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart, saying, The people is greater and taller than we, and the cities are great and walled up to heaven. And moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. And I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt, before your eyes. And in the wilderness where thou hast seen how that the Lord thy God bare thee, as a man doth bear his son, in all the way that he went, until ye came into this place. Yet in this thing ye did not believe the Lord your God, who went in the way before you, to search you out a place to pitch your tents in, in fire by night to show you by what way ye should go, and in a cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words, and was wroth and swear, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, which I swear to give unto your fathers, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh. He shall see it, and to him will I give the land that he hath trodden upon, and to his children, because he hath wholly followed the Lord. Also the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, saying, Thou also shalt not go in thither. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither. Encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Moreover, your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, 
and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you, and take your journey into the wilderness, by the way of the Red Sea. Then ye answered and said unto me, We have sinned against the Lord. We will go up and fight, according to all that the Lord our God commanded us. And when he had girded on every man his weapons of war, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto me, Say unto them, Go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you, lest ye be smitten before your enemies. So I spake unto you, and ye would not hear, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord, and went presumptuously up into the hill. And the Amorites, which dwelt in that mountain, came out against you, and chased you, as bees do, and destroyed you in Seir, even unto Hormah. And ye returned and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. So ye abode in Kadesh many days, according unto the days that ye abode there. Chapter 2 Then we turned, and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spake unto me. And we compassed Mount Seir many days. And the Lord spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn you northward, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot-breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. Ye shall buy meat of them for money, that ye may eat, and ye shall also buy water of them for money, that ye may drink. For the Lord thy God hath blessed thee in all the works of thy hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These forty years the Lord thy God hath been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. And when we passed by from our brethren, the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, through the way of the plain from Elath, and from Ezion Geber, we turned and passed by the way of the wilderness of Moab. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given our unto the children of Lot for a possession. The Emims dwelt therein in times past, a people great, and many, and tall, as the Anakims, which also were accounted giants, as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emims. The Horims also dwelt in Seir before time, but the children of Esau succeeded them, when they had destroyed them from before them, and dwelt in their stead, as Israel did unto the land of his possession, which the Lord gave unto them. Now rise up, said I, and get you over the brook Zered. And we went over the brook Zered. And in the space in which we came from Kadesh Barnea, until we were come over the brook Zered, was thirty and eight years, until all the generation of the men of war were wasted out from among the host, as the Lord sware unto them. For indeed the hand of the Lord was against them, to destroy them from among the host, until they were consumed. So it came to pass, when all the men of war were consumed and dead from among the people, that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou art to pass over through Ar, the coast of Moab, this day. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, distress them not, nor meddle with them. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession, because I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. That also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumims, a people great and many, and tall as the Anakims. But the Lord destroyed them before them, and they succeeded them, and dwelt in their stead, as he did to the children of Esau, which dwelt in Seir, when he destroyed the Horems from before them, and they succeeded them, 
and dwelt in their stead even unto this day. And the Avons which dwelt in Hazerim, even unto Azar, the Kaphtorims, which came forth out of Kaphtor, destroyed them, and dwelt in their stead. Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshben, and his land. Begin to possess it, and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee, and shall tremble, and be in anguish because of thee. And I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kadimoth unto Sihon, king of Heshbon, with words of peace, saying, Let me pass through thy land. I will go along by the highway. I will neither turn unto the right hand nor to the left. Thou shalt sell me meat for money that I may eat, and give me water for money that I may drink. Only I will pass through on my feet. As the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and the Moabites, which dwell in Ar, did unto me, until I should pass over Jordan into the land which the Lord our God giveth us. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, would not let us pass by him. For the Lord thy God hardened his spirit, and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into thy hand, as appeareth this day. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have begun to give Sihon and his land before thee. Begin to possess, that thou mayest inherit his land. Then Sihon came out against us, he and all his people, to fight at Jahaz. And the Lord our God delivered him before us, and we smote him, and his sons, and all his people. And we took all his cities at that time, and utterly destroyed the men, and the women, and the little ones. Of every city we left none to remain. Only the cattle we took for a prey unto ourselves, and the spoil of the cities which we took. From Aroer, which is by the brink of the river of Arnon, and from the city that is by the river, even unto Gilead, there was not one city too strong for us. The Lord our God delivered all unto us. Only unto the land of the children of Ammon thou camest not, nor unto any place of the river Jabbok, nor unto the cities in the mountains, nor unto whatsoever the Lord our God forbade us. Chapter 3 Then we turned, and went up the way to Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Idre. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people, and his land, into thy hand. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So the Lord our God delivered into our hands Og also, the king of Bashan, and all his people, and we smote him until none was left to him remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we took not from them. Three score cities, all the region of Argob, the kingdom of Og in Bashan. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates, and bars, beside unwalled towns a great many and we utterly destroyed them as we did unto sihon king of heshbon utterly destroying the men women and children of every city but all the cattle and the spoil of the cities we took for a prey to ourselves and we took at that time out of the hand of the two kings of the amorites the land that was on this side jordan from the river of Arnon unto Mount Hermon, which Hermon, the Sidonians call Syrian, and the Amorites call it Shinir. All the cities of the plain, and all Gilead, and all Bashan, unto Salca and Idre, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron, 
Is it not in Rabeth, of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubits of a man. And this land, which we possessed at that time, from Aurora, which is by the river Arnon, and the half-mount of Gilead, and this land, which we possessed at that time, from Aurora, which is by the river Arnon, and half-mount Gilead, and the cities thereof, gave I unto the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and the rest of Gilead, and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, gave I unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob, with all Bashan, which was called the land of giants. Jair, the son of Manasseh, took all the country of Argob, unto the coasts of Jeshuri and Magathai, and called them after his own name, Bashan Havoth Jair, unto this day, and I gave Gilead unto Machir, and unto the Reubenites, and unto the Gadites, I gave from Gilead, even unto the river Arnon, half the valley, and the border, even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon. The plain also, and Jordan, and the coast thereof, from Chinnereth, even unto the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, under Eshdoth Pisgah, eastward, and I commanded you at that time, saying, The Lord your God hath given you this land to possess it. Ye shall pass over armed before your brethren, the children of Israel, all that are meet for war. But your wives, and your little ones, and your cattle, for I know that ye have much cattle, shall abide in your cities which I have given you, until the Lord hath given rest unto your brethren, as well as unto you, until the Lord have given rest unto your brethren, as well as unto you, and until they also possess the land which the Lord your God have given them beyond Jordan. And then shall ye return every man unto his possession. And I commanded Joshua at that time, saying, Thine eyes have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto these two kings. So shall the Lord do unto all the kingdoms whither thou passest. Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, thou hast begun to shew thy servant thy greatness, and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth, that can do according to thy works, and according to thy might? I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain, and Lebanon. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes, and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, Let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. Get thee up into the top of Pisgah, and lift up thine eyes westward, and northward, and southward, and eastward and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. But charge Joshua, and encourage him, and strengthen him, for he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. So we abode in the valley over against Beth Peor. Chapter 4 now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Val Peor. For all the men that followed Val Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me that he should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. 
keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people for what nation is there so great who hath god so nigh unto them as the lord our god is in all things that we call upon him for and what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which i set before you this day only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life but teach them thy sons and thy sons sons especially the day that thou stoodest before the lord of thy god in horeb when the lord said unto me gather me the people together and i will make them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they may teach their children and ye came near and stood under the mountain and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven with darkness clouds and thick darkness and the lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire ye heard the voice of the words but saw no similitude only ye heard a voice and he declared unto you his covenant which he commanded you to perform even ten commandments and he wrote them upon two tables of stone and the lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves for ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the lord spake unto you in horeb out of the midst of the fire lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image the similitude of any figure the likeness of male or female the likeness of any beast that is upon the earth the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth and unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars even all the host of heaven shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them which the lord thy god hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven but the lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace even out of egypt to be unto him a people of inheritance as ye are this day furthermore the lord was angry with me for your sakes and swear that i should not go over jordan and that i should not go in unto that good land which the lord thy god giveth thee for an inheritance but i must die in this land i must not go over jordan but ye shall go over and possess that good land take heed unto yourselves lest ye forget the covenant of the lord your god which he made with you and make you a graven image or the likeness of any thing which the lord thy god hath forbidden thee for the lord thy god is a consuming fire even a jealous god when thou shalt beget children and children's children and ye shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of any thing and shall do evil in the sight of the lord thy god to provoke him to anger i call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto ye go over jordan to possess it ye shall not prolong your days upon it but shall utterly be destroyed and the lord shall scatter you among the nations and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen whither the lord shall lead you and there ye shall serve gods the work of men's hands wood and stone which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell 
But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he sware unto them. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from one side of heaven unto the other, whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire, as thou hast heard, and live? Or hath God assayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation, by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes. Unto thee it was shewed, that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee, to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he shewed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. And because he loved thy fathers, therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight, with his mighty power out of Egypt, to drive out nations from before thee, greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance, as it is this day. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thine heart, that the Lord, he is God, in heaven above, and upon the earth beneath, there is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for ever. Then Moses severed three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising, that the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares, and hated him not in times past and that fleeing unto one of these cities he might live, namely, Bezer in the wilderness, in the plain country, of the Reubenites, and Ramoth in Gilead, of the Gadites, and Golan in Bashan, of the Manassites. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies, and the statutes, and the judgments, which Moses spake unto the children of Israel, after they came forth out of Egypt. On this side Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor, in the land of Sihon king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote, after they were come forth out of Egypt, and they possessed his land, and the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side Jordan, toward the sun rising. From Aror, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon. And all the plain on this side Jordan eastward, even unto the sea of the plain, under the springs of Pisgah. Chapter 5 And Moses called all Israel, and said unto them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that ye may learn them, and keep, and do them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here, alive, this day. The Lord talked with you, 
face to face in the mount out of the midst of the fire i stood between the lord and you at that time to shew you the word of the lord for ye were afraid by reason of the fire and went not up into the mount saying i am the lord thy god which brought thee out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage thou shalt have none other gods before me thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments thou shalt not take the name of the lord thy god in vain for the lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain keep the sabbath day to sanctify it as the lord thy god hath commanded thee six days thou shalt labour and do all thy work but the seventh day is the sabbath of the lord thy god in it thou shalt not do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thine ox nor thine ass nor any of thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates that thy manservant and thy maidservants may rest as well as thou and remember that thou wast a servant in the land of egypt and that the lord thy god brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm therefore the lord thy god commanded thee to keep the sabbath day honour thy father and thy mother as the lord thy god hath commanded thee that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou shalt not kill neither shalt thou commit adultery neither shalt thou steal neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbour neither shalt thou desire thy neighbour's wife neither shalt thou covet thy neighbour's house his field or his manservant or his maidservant his ox or his ass or any thing that is thy neighbour's these words the lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire of the cloud and of the thick darkness with a great voice and he added no more and he wrote them in two tables of stone and delivered them unto me and it came to pass when ye heard the voice out of the midst of the darkness for the mountain did burn with fire that ye came near unto me even all the heads of your tribes and your elders and ye said behold the lord our god hath showed us his glory and his greatness and we have heard his voice out of the midst of the fire we have seen this day that god doth talk with man and he liveth now therefore why should we die for this great fire will consume us if we hear the voice of the lord our god any more then we shall die for who is there of all flesh that hath heard the voice of a living god speaking out of the midst of the fire as we have and lived go thou near and hear all that the lord our god shall say and speak thou unto us all that the lord our god shall speak unto thee and we will hear it and do it and the lord heard the voice of your words when ye spake unto me and the lord said unto me i have heard the voice of the words of this people which they have spoken unto thee and they have well said all that they have spoken o oh, that there were such an heart in them that they would fear me and keep all my commandments always that it might be well with them and with their children for ever go say unto them get you into your tents again but as for thee stand thou here by me 
and I will speak unto thee all the commandments, and the statutes, and the judgments, which thou shalt teach them, that they may do them in the land which I give them to possess it. Ye shall observe to do, therefore, as the Lord your God hath commanded you. Ye shall not turn aside to the right hand, or to the left. Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. Chapter 6 now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments, which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God, to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee, thou, and thy son, and thy son's son, all the days of thy life and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that he may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house, and on thy gates. And it shall be, when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggedst not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantedst not. When thou shalt have eaten, and be full, then beware, lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee, and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God, as he tempted him in Massa. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to cast out all thine enemies from before thee as the Lord hath spoken. And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God commanded you? Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord shewed signs and wonders great and sore, upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household. And he brought us out from thence, that he might bring us in, to give us the land which he sware unto our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive, 
as it is at this day and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the lord our god as he hath commanded us chapter seven when the lord thy god shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it and hath cast out many nations before thee the hittites and the girgashites and the amorites and the canaanites and the perizzites and the hivites and the jebusites seven nations greater and mightier than thou and when the lord thy god shall deliver them before thee thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them thou shalt make no covenant with them no show mercy unto them neither shalt thou make marriages with them thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son for they will turn away thy son from following me that they may serve other gods so will the anger of the lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly and thus shall ye deal with them ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire for thou art an holy people unto the lord thy god the lord thy god hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth the lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people for ye were the fewest of all people but because the lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers hath the lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of pharaoh king of egypt know therefore that the lord thy god he is god the faithful god which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repayeth them that hate him to their face to destroy them he will not be slack to him that hateth him he will repay him to his face thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which i command thee this day to do them wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them that the lord thy god shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he sware unto thy fathers and he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee and he will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land thy corn and thy wine and thine oil the increase of thy kine and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee thou shalt be blessed above all people there shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your cattle and the lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of egypt which thou knowest upon thee but will lay them upon all them that hate thee and thou shalt consume all the people which the lord thy god shall deliver thee thine eye shall have no pity upon them neither shalt thou serve their gods for that will be a snare unto thee if thou shalt say in thine heart these nations are more than i how can i dispossess them thou shalt not be afraid of them but shalt well remember what the lord thy god did unto pharaoh and unto all egypt the great temptations which thine eyes saw and the signs and the wonders and the mighty hand and the stretched out arm whereby the lord thy god brought thee out so shall the lord thy god do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid moreover the lord thy god will send the hornet among them until they that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed thou shalt not be affrighted at them 
for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God, and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee, by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction, until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand before thee, until thou have destroyed them. The graven images of their god shall ye burn with fire. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Chapter 8 All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live, and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee, and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these forty years. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that, as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to fear him. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he hath given thee. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fiery serpents, and scorpions, and drought where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flint, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of mine hand hath gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he sware unto thy fathers, as it is this day. And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them, and worship them, 
I testify against you this day, that ye shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroyeth before your face, so shall ye perish, because ye would not be obedient unto the voice of the Lord your God. Chapter 9 Hear, O Israel, thou art to pass over Jordan this day, to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven, a people great and tall, the children of the Anakims, whom thou knowest, and of whom thou hast heard say, who can stand before the children of Anak. Understand, therefore, this day, that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee, as a consuming fire he shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before thy face. So shalt thou drive them out, and destroy them quickly, as the Lord hath said unto thee. Speak not thou in thine heart, after that the Lord thy God hath cast them out before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations the Lord doth drive them out from before thee, not for thy righteousness, or for the uprightness of thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. Remember, and forget not, how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness. From the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt, until ye came unto this place, ye have been rebellious against the Lord. Also, in Horeb ye provoked the Lord to wrath, so that the Lord was angry with you to have destroyed you. When I was gone up into the mount to receive the tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant which the Lord made with you, then I abode in the mount forty days and forty nights. I neither did eat bread nor drink water. And the Lord delivered unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of God, and on them was written according to all the words which the Lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. And it came to pass, at the end of forty days and forty nights, that the Lord gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence, as for thy people which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They are quickly turned aside out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. Furthermore the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and, behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Let me alone, that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven, and I will make of thee a nation greater and mightier than they. So I turned and came down from the mount, and the mount burned with fire, and the two tables of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and, behold, ye had sinned against the Lord your God, and had made you a molten calf. He had turned aside quickly out of the way, which the Lord had commanded you. And I took the two tables, and cast them out of my two hands, and brake them before your eyes. And I fell down before the Lord, as at the first, forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water, because of all your sins which ye sinned, in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure, wherewith the Lord was wroth against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. 
than if the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. And I took your sin, the calf which he had made, and burnt it with fire, and stamped it, and ground it very small, even until it was as small as dust. And I cast the dust thereof into the brook that descended out of the mount, and at Taborah, and at Massa, and at kibroth Hatava, ye provoked the Lord to wrath. Likewise, when the Lord sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, then ye rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and ye believed him not, nor hearkened to his voice. Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the day that I knew you, Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights, as I fell down at the first, because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed, therefore, unto the Lord, and said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people, and thine inheritance, which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember thy servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, nor to their sin, lest the land which thou broughtest us out say. Because the Lord was not able to bring them into the land which he promised them, and because he hated them, he hath brought them out to slay them in the wilderness. Yet they are thy people, and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest out by thy mighty power, and by thy stretched-out arm. Chapter 10 At that time the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone, like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood, and I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest, and thou shalt put them in the ark. And I made an ark of shittim wood, and hewed two tables of stone like unto the first, and went up into the mount, having the two tables in mine hand. And he wrote on the tables, according to the first writing, the Ten Commandments, which the Lord spake unto you in the mount out of the midst of the fire, in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them unto me, and I turned myself and came down from the mount, and put the tables in the ark which I had made. And there they be, as the Lord commanded me. And the children of Israel took their journey from Beroth of the children of Jacob to Moserah. There Aaron died, and there he was buried. And Eleazar his son ministered in the priest's office in his stead. From thence they journeyed unto Gudgoda, and from Gudgoda to Jotbeth, a land of rivers, of waters. At that time the Lord separated the tribe of Lephi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord to minister unto him, and to bless in his name unto this day. Wherefore Levi hath no part, nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord thy God promised him. And I stayed in the mount, according to the first time, forty days and forty nights. And the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also, and the Lord would not destroy thee. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, take thy journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. And now, Israel... What doth the Lord thy God require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord, and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you 
above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods, and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger, in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things, which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons, and now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Chapter 11 Therefore thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and keep his charge, and his statutes, and his judgments, and his commandments alway. And know ye this day, for I speak not with your children, which have not known, and which have not seen the chastisement of the Lord your God, his greatness, his mighty hand, and his stretched out arm, and his miracles, and his acts, which he did in the midst of Egypt, unto Pharaoh the king of Egypt, and unto all his land, and what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses, and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them, as they pursued after you, and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day, and what he did unto you in the wilderness, until ye came into this place, and what he did unto Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed them up, and their households, and their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession, in the midst of all Israel. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord sware unto your fathers, to give unto them, and to their seed, a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land whither thou goest in to possess it, is not as the land of Egypt, from whence ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed, and wateredst it with thy foot, as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven, a land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn, and thy wine, and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside, and serve other gods, and worship them, and then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these, my words, in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them, your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, 
when thou liest down and when thou risest up, and thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children, in the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. For if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations, and mightier than yourselves. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you, and the dread of you, upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse, if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods, which ye have not known. And it shall come to pass, when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land, whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gerizim, and the curse upon Mount Ebal, are they not on the other side, Jordan, by the way where the sun goeth down, in the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne over against Gilgal, beside the plains of Moray? For ye shall pass over Jordan, to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it, and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. End of section 17section 18 of the Holy Bible, the King James Version, Deuteronomy, chapters 12 to 25. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta. Deuteronomy chapter 12. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess served their gods, upon the high mountains, and upon the hills, and under every green tree. And ye shall overthrow their altars, and break their pillars, and burn their groves with fire. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods, and destroy the names of them out of that place. You shall not do so unto the Lord your God but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto his habitation shall ye seek, and thither thou shalt come, and thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, and your tithes, and heave offerings of your land, and your vows, and your freewill offerings, and the firstlings of your herds, and of your flocks, and there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day, every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes, for ye are not as yet come to the rest, and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But when ye go over Jordan, and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies round about, so that ye dwell in safety, 
then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither shall ye bring all that I command you, your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and the heave offering of your hand, and all your choice vows which ye vow unto the Lord. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God, ye and your sons and your daughters and your men servants and your maid servants and the Levite that is within your gates, for as much as he hath no part nor inheritance with you, take heed to thyself that thou offer not thy burnt offerings in every place that thou seest, but in the place which the Lord shall choose, in one of thy tribes, there thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, and there thou shalt do all that I command thee. Notwithstanding thou mayest kill and eat flesh in all thy gates, whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee, the unclean and the clean may eat thereof, as of the roebuck and as of the heart. Only ye shall not eat the blood, ye shall pour it upon the earth as water. Thou mayest not eat within thy gates the tithe of thy corn, or of thy wine, or of thy oil, or the firstlings of thy herds, or of thy flock, nor any of thy vows which thou vowest, nor thy freewill offerings, or heave offering of thine hand, but thou must eat them before the Lord thy God, in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, thou, and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God in all that thou puttest thine hands unto. Take heed to thyself that thou forsake not the Levite, as long as thou livest upon the earth. When the Lord thy God shall enlarge thy border, as he hath promised thee, and thou shalt say, I will eat flesh, because thy soul longeth to eat flesh, thou mayest eat flesh, whatever thy soul lusteth after, if the place which the Lord thy God hath chosen to put his name there be too far from thee. Then thou shalt kill of thy herd and of thy flock, which the Lord hath given thee, as I have commanded thee. And thou shalt eat in thy gates whatever thy soul lusteth after. Even as the roebuck and the heart is eaten, so thou shalt eat them. The unclean and the clean shall eat of them alike. Only be sure that thou eat not the blood, for the blood is the life and thou mayest not eat the life with the flesh. Thou shalt not eat it. Thou shalt pour it upon the earth as water. Thou shalt not eat it, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. Only thy holy things which thou hast, and thy vows thou shalt take, and go unto the place which the Lord shall choose and thou shalt offer thy burnt offerings, the flesh and the blood, upon the altar of the Lord thy God. And the blood of thy sacrifices shall be poured out upon the altar of the Lord thy God, and thou shalt eat the flesh. Observe and hear all these words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee, and with thy children after thee, for ever, when thou doest that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee, whither thou goest to possess them, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their land, take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. For every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done unto their gods. For even their sons and their daughters they have burnt in the fire to their gods. What thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Chapter 13 If there arise among you a prophet, or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, 
and the sign or the wonder come to pass whereof he spake unto thee saying let us go after other gods which thou hast not known and let us serve them thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the lord your god proveth you to know whether ye love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul ye shall walk after the lord your god and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him and that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he hath spoken to turn you away from the lord your god which brought you out of the land of egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the lord thy god commanded thee to walk in so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee if thy brother the son of thy mother or thy son or thy daughter or the wife of thy bosom or thy friend which is as thine own soul entice thee secretly saying let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known thou nor thy fathers namely of the gods of the people which are round about you nigh unto thee or far off from thee from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth thou shalt not consent unto him nor hearken unto him neither shall thine eye pity him neither shalt thou spare neither shalt thou conceal him but thou shalt surely kill him thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death and afterward the hand of all the people and thou shalt stone him with stones that he die because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the lord thy god which brought thee out of the land of egypt from the house of bondage and all israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this among you if thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities which the lord thy god hath given thee to dwell there saying certain men the children of belial are gone out from among you and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city saying let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known then shalt thou inquire and make search and ask diligently and behold if it be truth and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought among you thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword destroying it utterly and all that is therein and the cattle thereof with the edge of the sword and thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof and shalt burn with fire the city and all the spoil thereof every whit for the lord thy god and it shall be an heap for ever it shall not be built again and there shall cleave not of the cursed thing to thine hand that the lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and shew thee mercy and have compassion unto thee and multiply thee as he hath sworn unto thy fathers when thou shalt hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to keep all his commandments which i command thee this day to do that which is right in the eyes of the lord thy god ye are the children of the lord your god ye shall not cut yourselves nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead for thou art an holy people unto the lord thy god and the lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth thou shalt not eat any abominable thing these are the beasts which ye shall eat the ox the sheep and the goat the hart and the roebuck and the fallow deer and the wild goat and the pygarg and the wild ox and the chamois and every beast that parteth the hoof and cleaveth the cleft into two claws and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall not eat nevertheless these ye shall not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the cloven hoof as the camel and the hare and the coney for they chew the cud but divide not the hoof therefore they are unclean unto you 
and the swine, because it divideth the hoof, yet cheweth not the cud, it is unclean unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead carcass. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales ye may not eat. It is unclean unto you. Of all clean birds shall ye eat. But these are they of which ye shall not eat. The eagle, and the ossifrage, and the osprey, and the glade, and the kite, and the vulture after his kind, and every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the nighthawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, the little owl, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear eagle, and the cormorant, and the stork, and the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. And every creeping thing that flieth is unclean unto you. They shall not be eaten, but of all clean fowls ye may eat. Ye shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself. Thou shalt give it unto the stranger that is in thy gates, that he may eat it. Or thou mayst sell it unto an alien, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not seethe a kid in his mother's milk. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God, in the place which he shall choose to place his name there, the tithe of thy corn, or of thy wine, and of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herds, and of thy flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thine hand, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. And the Levite that is within thy gates, Thou shalt not forsake him, for he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. At the end of three years thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year, and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger, and the fatherless, and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat, and be satisfied, that the Lord of thy God may bless thee, and all the work of thine hand which thou doest. Chapter 15 At the end of every seven years thou shalt make a release, and this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth aught unto his neighbour shall release it. He shall not exact it of his neighbour, or of his brother, because it is called the Lord's release. Of a foreigner thou mayest exact it again, but that which is thine with thy brother thine hand shall release, save when there shall be no poor among you. For the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, only if thou carefully hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all these commandments which I command thee this day. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee, as he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. If there be among you a poor man, 
of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou shalt not harden thine heart nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother but thou shalt open thine hand wide unto him and shalt surely lend him sufficient for his need in that which he wanteth beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart saying the seventh year the year of release is at hand and thine eye be evil against thy poor brother and thou givest him not and he cry unto the lord against thee and it be a sin unto thee thou shalt surely give him and thine heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works, and in all that thou puttest thine hand unto. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, and to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. And if thy brother, an Hebrew man, or an Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. And when thou sendest him out free from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock, and out of thy floor, and out of thy winepress, of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. And thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of Egypt, and the Lord thy God redeemed thee. Therefore I command thee this thing to-day. And it shall be, if he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because he loveth thee and thine house, because he is well with thee, then thou shalt take an all and thrust it through his ear unto the door, and he shall be thy servant for ever, and also unto thy maid servant thou shalt do likewise. It shall not seem hard unto thee when thou sendest him away free from thee, for he hath been worth a double hired servant to thee in serving thee six years, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all that thou doest. All the firstling males that come out of thy herd, and of thy flock, thou shalt sanctify unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work with the firstling of thy bullock, nor shear the firstling of thy sheep. Thou shalt eat it before the Lord thy God, year by year, in the place which the Lord shall choose, thou and thy household. And if there be any blemish therein, as if it be lame, or blind, or have any ill blemish, thou shalt not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt eat it within thy gates. The unclean and the clean person shall eat it alike, as the roebuck and as the heart. Only thou shalt not eat the blood thereof. Thou shalt pour it upon the ground as water. Chapter 16 Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God, of the flock and the herd, in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days, neither shall there any thing of the flesh which thou sacrificed the first day at even remain all night until the morning. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover, at even, at the going down of the sun, at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. 
and thou shalt roast it and eat it in the place which the lord thy god shall choose and thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the lord thy god thou shalt do no work therein seven days shalt thou number unto thee begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the lord thy god with a tribute of a free-will offering of thine hand which thou shalt give unto the lord thy god according as the lord thy god hath blessed thee and thou shalt rejoice before the lord thy god thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the lord thy god hath chosen to place his name there and thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in egypt and thou shalt observe and do these statutes thou shalt observe the feast of tabernacles seven days after that thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the levite the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the lord thy god in the place which the lord shall choose because the lord thy god shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hand therefore thou shalt surely rejoice three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before the lord empty every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the lord thy god which he hath given thee judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates which the lord thy god giveth thee throughout thy tribes and they shall judge the people with just judgment thou shalt not wrest judgment thou shalt not respect persons neither take a gift for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous that which is altogether just shalt thou follow that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the lord thy god which thou shalt make thee neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the lord thy god hateth chapter seventeen thou shalt not sacrifice unto the lord thy god any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favouredness for that is an abomination unto the lord thy god if there be found among you within any of thy gates which the lord thy god giveth thee man or woman that hath wrought wickedness in the sight of the lord thy god in transgressing his covenant and hath gone and served other gods and worshipped them either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven which i have not commanded and it be told thee and thou hast heard of it and inquired diligently and behold it be true and the thing certain that such abomination is wrought in israel then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman which have committed that wicked thing unto thy gates even that man or that woman and shalt stone them with stones till they die at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death but at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death the hands of the witnesses shall be first upon him to put him to death and afterward the hands of all the people so thou shalt put the evil away from among you 
if there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment between blood and blood between plea and plea and between stroke and stroke being matters of controversy within thy gates then shalt thou arise and get thee up into the place which the lord thy god shall choose and thou shalt come unto the priests the levites and unto the judge that shall be in those days and inquire and they shall shew thee the sentence of judgment and thou shalt do according to the sentence which they of that place which the lord shall choose shall shew thee and thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee according to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee and according to the judgment which they shall tell thee thou shalt do thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall shew thee to the right hand nor to the left and the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the lord thy god or unto the judge even that man shall die and thou shalt put away the evil from israel and all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously when thou art come unto the land which the lord thy god giveth thee and shalt possess it and shalt dwell therein and shalt say i will set a king over me like as all the nations that are about me thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee whom the lord thy god shall choose one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee thou mayest not set a stranger over thee which is not thy brother but he shall not multiply horses to himself nor cause the people to return to egypt to the end that he should multiply horses for as much as the lord hath said unto you ye shall henceforth return no more that way neither shall he multiply wives to himself that his heart turn not away neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold and it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priests the levites and it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the lord his god to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them that his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom and his children in the midst of israel chapter eighteen the priests the levites and all the tribe of levi shall have no part nor inheritance with israel they shall eat the offerings of the lord made by fire and his inheritance therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren the lord is their inheritance as he hath said unto them and this shall be the priest's due from the people from them that offer a sacrifice whether it be ox or sheep and they shall give unto the priest the shoulder and the two cheeks and the maw the first fruit also of thy corn of thy wine and of thine oil and the first of the fleece of thy sheep shalt thou give him for the lord thy god hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister in the name of the lord him and his sons for ever and if a levite come from any of thy gates out of all israel where he sojourned and come up with all the desire of his mind unto the place which the lord shall choose then he shall minister in the name of the lord his god as all his brethren the levites do which stand there before the lord they shall have like portions to eat beside that which cometh of the sale of his patrimony when thou art come into the land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations 
there shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times, and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desiredst of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, How shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken, but the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Chapter 19 When the Lord thy God hath cut off the nations whose land the Lord thy God giveth thee, and thou succeedest them, and dwellest in their cities and in their houses, thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare thee a way, and divide the coasts of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit into three parts, that every slayer may flee thither. And this is the case of the slayer, which shall flee thither, that he may live. Whoso killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past, as when a man goeth into a wood with his neighbor to hew wood, and his hand fetcheth a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the health, and lighteth upon the shoulder that he die, he shall flee unto one of those cities and live lest the avenger of the blood pursue the slayer, while his heart is hot, and overtake him, because the way is long, and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in times past. Wherefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee, and if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised to give unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments, and do them which I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee, beside these three, that innocent blood be not shed in thy hand, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. But if any man hate his neighbor, and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him mortally that he die, and fleeth into one of these cities, 
then the elders of his city shall send and fetch him thence, and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Thine eye shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of the innocent blood from Israel, that it may go well with thee. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity, or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days, and the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness, and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him, as he had thought to have done unto his brothers. So shalt thou put the evil away from among you. And those which remain shall hear and fear, and shall henceforth commit no more any such evil among you. And thine eye shall not pity, but life shall go for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Chapter 20 When thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots, and a people more than thou, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be, when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people, and shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies, to save you. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house, and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that hath planted a vineyard, and hath not eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath betrothed a wife, and hath not taken her? Let him go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. And the officer shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. And it shall be, when the officers have made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people, when thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it. Then proclaim peace unto it, and it shall be, if it make thee answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be, that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. And when the Lord thy God hath delivered it unto thine hands, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women and the little ones, and the cattle, and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself. And thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which the Lord thy God hath given thee. 
thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee which are not of the cities of these nations but of the cities of these people which the lord thy god doth give thee for an inheritance thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth but thou shalt utterly destroy them namely the hittites and the amorites the canaanites and the parasites the hivites and the jebusites as the lord thy god hath commanded thee that they teach you not to do after all their abominations which they have done unto their gods so should ye sin against the lord your god when thou shalt besiege a city for a long time in making war against it to take it thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them for thou mayest eat of them and thou shalt not cut them down for the tree of the field is man's life to employ them in the siege only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat thou shalt destroy and cut them down and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee until it be subdued chapter twenty one if one be found slain in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee to possess it lying in the field and it be not known who hath slain him then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain and it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man even the elders of that city shall take an heifer which hath not been wrought with and which hath not drawn in the yoke and the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer unto a rough valley which is neither eared nor sown and shall strike off the heifer's neck there in the valley and the priests the sons of levi shall come near for them the lord thy god hath chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the lord and by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried and all the elders of that city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer that is beheaded in the valley and they shall answer and say our hands have not shed this blood neither have our eyes seen it be merciful o lord unto thy people israel which thou hast redeemed and lay not innocent blood unto thy people of israel's charge and the blood shall be forgiven them so shalt thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of the lord when thou goest forth to war against thine enemies and the lord thy god hath delivered them into thine hands and thou hast taken them captive and seest among the captives a beautiful woman and hast a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife then thou shalt bring her home to thine house and she shall shave her head and pare her nails and she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her and shall remain in thine house and bewail her father and her mother a full month and after that thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband and she shall be thy wife and it shall be if thou have no delight in her then thou shalt let her go whither she will but thou shalt not sell her at all for money thou shalt not make merchandise of her because thou hast humbled her if a man have two wives one beloved and another hated and they have borne him children both the beloved and the hated and if the first-born son be hers that was hated then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath that he may not make the son of the beloved first-born before the son of the hated which is indeed the first-born but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the first-born by giving him a double portion of all that he hath for he is the beginning of his strength the right of the first-born 
is his. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father, or the voice of his mother, and that, when they have chastened him, will not hearken unto them, then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him out unto the elders of his city, and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones, that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. And all Israel shall hear and fear. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged is accursed of God. That thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. Chapter 22 Thou shalt not see thy brother's ox or his sheep go astray, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt in any case bring them again unto thy brother. And if thy brother be not nigh unto thee, or if thou know him not, then thou shalt bring it unto thine own house, and it shall be with thee, until thy brother seek after it, and thou shalt restore it to him again. In like manner shalt thou do with his ass, and so shalt thou do with his raiment, and with all lost thing of thy brother's, which he hath lost, and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise. And with all lost thing of thy brother's, which he hath lost, and thou hast found, shalt thou do likewise. Thou mayest not hide thyself. Thou shalt not see thy brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way, and hide thyself from them. Thou shalt surely help him to lift them up again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. If a bird's nest chance to be before thee in the way, in any tree, or on the ground, whether they be young ones or eggs, and the dame sitting upon the young, or upon the eggs, thou shalt not take the dame with the young, but thou shalt in any wise let the dame go, and take the young to thee, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days. When thou buildest a new house, then thou shalt make a battlement for thy roof, that thou bring not blood upon thine house, if any man fall from thence. Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown, and the fruit of thy vineyard, be defiled. Thou shalt not plough with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts, as of woolen and linen together. Thou shalt make three fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou coverest thyself. If any man take a wife, and go in unto her, and hate her, and give occasions of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid, then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city, and the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. And they shall immerse him, 
in a hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of the city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then they shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city, and lie with her, then ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife. So thou shalt put away evil from among you. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her, and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death, for as when a man riseth against his neighbour, and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, and the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife, nor discover his father's skirt. Chapter 23 He that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord for ever. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee Balaam the son of Beor, of Pithor, of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Thou shalt not seek their peace, nor their prosperity, all thy days for ever. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in their third generation, when the host goeth forth against thine enemies. Then keep thee from every wicked thing. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness, that chanceth him by night, then he shall go abroad out of the camp, he shall not come within the camp. But it shall be, when evening cometh on, he shall wash himself with water, and when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, 
whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be, when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp, to deliver thee, and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee, even among you, in that place which he shall choose in one of thy gates, where it lacketh him best. Thou shalt not oppress him. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore, or the price of a dog, into the house of the Lord thy God, for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of any thing that is lent upon usury. Unto a stranger thou mayst lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to, in the land whither thou goest to possess it. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes thy fill at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. Chapter 24 when a man hath taken a wife, and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favour in his eyes, because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, and write her a bill of divorcement, and giveth it in her hand, and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife, after that she is defiled, for that is abomination before the Lord. And thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business. But he shall be free at home one year, and shall cheer up his wife, which he hath taken. No man shall take the nether or the upper millstone to pledge. For he taketh a man's life to pledge. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, and maketh merchandise of him, or selleth him, then that thief shall die, and thou shalt put evil away from among you. Take heed in the plague of leprosy, that thou observe diligently and do according to all that the priests, the Levites, shall teach you, as I commanded them, so ye shall observe to do. Remember what the Lord thy God did unto Miriam, by the way, after that ye were come forth out of Egypt? When thou dost lend thy brother anything, 
thou shalt not go into his house to fetch his pledge thou shalt stand abroad and the man to whom thou dost lend shall bring out the pledge abroad unto thee and if the man be poor thou shalt not sleep with his pledge in any case thou shalt deliver him the pledge again when the sun goeth down that he may sleep in his own raiment and bless thee and it shall be righteousness unto thee before the lord thy god thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates at his day thou shalt give him his hire neither shall the sun go down upon it for he is poor and setteth his heart upon it lest he cry against thee unto the lord and it be sin against thee the fathers shall not be put to death for the children neither shall the children be put to death for the fathers every man shall be put to death for his own sin thou shalt not pervert the judgment of the stranger nor of the fatherless nor take a widow's raiment to pledge but thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in egypt and the lord thy god redeemed thee thence therefore i command thee to do this thing when thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field and hast forgot a sheaf in the field thou shalt not go again to fetch it it shall be for the stranger for the fatherless and for the widow that the lord thy god may bless thee in all the work of thine hands when thou beatest thine olive tree thou shalt not go over the boughs again it shall be for the stranger for the fatherless and for the widow when thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard thou shalt not glean it afterward it shall be for the stranger for the fatherless and for the widow and thou shalt remember that thou wast a bondman in the land of egypt therefore i command thee to do this thing chapter twenty five if there be a controversy between men and they come unto judgment that the judges may judge them then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked and it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten that the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number forty stripes he may give him and not exceed lest if he should exceed and beat him above these with many stripes then thy brother should seem vile unto thee thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn if brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her and it shall be that the first-born which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead that his name be not put out of israel and if the man like not to take his brother's wife then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say my husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in israel he will not perform the duty of my husband's brother then the elders of his city shall call him and speak unto him and if he stand to it and say i like not to take her then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house and his name shall be called in israel the house of him that hath his shoe loosed when men strive together one with another 
and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand that smiteth him and putteth forth her hand and taketh him by the secrets then thou shalt cut off her hand thine eye shall not pity her thou shalt not have in thy bag diverse weights a great and a small thou shalt not have in thine house diverse measures a great and a small but thou shalt have a perfect and just weight a perfect and just measure shalt thou give that thy days may be lengthened in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee for all that do such things and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the lord thy god remember what amalek did unto thee by the way when you were come forth out of egypt how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee even all that were feeble behind thee when thou wast faint and weary and he feared not god therefore it shall be when the lord thy god hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the lord thy god giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of amalek from under heaven thou shalt not forget it end of section eighteen Section 19 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Deuteronomy, chapters 26 to 34. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta. Chapter 26. And it shall be, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possessest it, and dwellest therein, thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of thy land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt put it in a basket, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And thou shalt go unto the priest that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand, and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. And thou shalt speak and say before the Lord thy God, A Syrian, ready to perish, was my father. And he went down into Egypt, and sojourned there with a few, and became there a nation, great, mighty, and populous. And the Egyptians evil entreated us, and afflicted us, and laid upon us hard bondage. And when we cried unto the Lord God of our fathers, the Lord heard our voice, and looked on our affliction, and our labor, and our oppression. And the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and with an outstretched arm, and with great terribleness, and with signs, and with wonders. And he hath brought us into this place, and hath given us this land, even a land that floweth with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which thou, O Lord, hast given me. And thou shalt set it before the Lord thy God, and worship before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which the Lord thy God hath given unto thee, and unto thine house, thou and the Levite, and the stranger that is among you. When thou hast made an end of tithing, all the tithes of thine increase the third year, which is the year of tithing, and hast given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates, and be filled, then thou shalt say before the Lord thy God, 
I have brought away the hallowed things out of mine house, and also have given them unto the Levite, and to the stranger, to the fatherless, and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. I have not eaten thereof in my mourning, neither have I taken away aught thereof for any unclean use, nor given aught thereof for the dead. But I have hearkened to the voice of the Lord my God, and have done according to all that thou hast commanded me. Look down from thy holy habitation, from heaven, and bless thy people Israel, and the land which thou hast given us, as thou swearest unto thy fathers, a land that floweth with milk and honey. This day the Lord thy God hath commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments. Thou shalt, therefore, keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he hath promised thee, and that thou should keepest all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made, in praise, and in name, and in honour, and that thou mayst be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. Chapter 27 And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when ye pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones, and plaster them with plaster, and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law, when thou art passed over, that thou mayst go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day, in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them, Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings, and shalt eat there, and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed, and hearken, O Israel. This day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when ye are come over Jordan. Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse. Reuben, Gad, and Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak, and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Cursed be he that setteth light, 
by his father or his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that perverteth the judgment of the stranger, fatherless and a widow. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovereth his father's skirt. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on a high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field, Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flux of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket, and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee, an holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods, to serve them, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, 
that all these curses shall come upon thee, and overtake thee. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, and with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them, and shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, and thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. The Lord shall smite thee with the botch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart, and thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness, and thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed, and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save thee. Thou shalt betroth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine axe shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labours shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed away, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed, from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone, and thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards, and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine, nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil. 
for thine olive shall cast his fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee, very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenedst not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments, and his statutes, which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign, and for a wonder, and upon thy seed for ever, because thou servedst not the Lord thy God, with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favour to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee, and he shall besiege thee and all thy gates, until thy high and fenced walls come down wherein thou trustedst throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee and all thy gates throughout the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons, and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee, in the siege, and in the straitness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. So that the man that is tender among you, and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother, and toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children, whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left him in the siege and in the straitness, wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee and all thy gates. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom, and toward her son, and toward her daughter, and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet, and toward the children which she shall bear, for she shall eat them, for want of all things secretly in the siege and straitness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sickness, and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee, until thou be destroyed. 
and ye shall be left few in number whereas ye were as the stars of heaven for multitude because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the lord thy god and it shall come to pass that as the lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you so the lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught and ye shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it and the lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other and there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone and among these nations shalt thou find no ease neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest but the lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee and thou shalt fear day and night and shalt have none assurance of thy life in the morning thou shalt say would god it were even and at even thou shalt say would god it were morning for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see and the lord shall bring thee into egypt again with ships by the way whereof i spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen and no man shall buy you chapter twenty nine these are the words of the covenant which the lord commanded moses to make with the children of israel in the land of moab beside the covenants which he made with them in horeb and moses called unto all israel and said unto them ye have seen all that the lord did before your eyes in the land of egypt unto pharaoh and unto all his servants and unto all his land the great temptations which thine eyes have seen the signs and those great miracles yet the lord hath not given you an heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day and i have led you forty years in the wilderness your clothes are not waxen old upon you and thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot ye have not eaten bread neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink that ye might know that i am the lord your god and when ye came unto this place sihon the king of heshbon and og the king of bashan came out against us unto battle and we smote them and we took their land and we gave it for an inheritance unto the reubenites and to the gadites and to the half tribe of manasseh keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that ye do ye stand this day all of you before the lord your god your captains of your tribes your elders and your officers with all the men of israel your little ones your wives and thy stranger that is in thy camp from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water that thou shouldest enter into covenant with the lord thy god and into his oath which the lord thy god maketh with thee this day that he may establish thee to-day for a people unto himself and that he may be unto thee a god as he hath said unto thee and as he hath sworn unto thy fathers to abraham to isaac and to jacob neither with you only do i make this covenant and this oath but with him that standeth here with us this day before the lord our god and also with him that is not here with us this day for ye know how we have dwelt in the land of egypt and how we came through the nations which he passed by and ye have seen their abominations and their idols wood and stone silver and gold which were among them lest there should be any among you man or woman 
or family or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him, but then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. And the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenants that are written in this book of the law, so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you, and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land, and the sicknesses which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone, and salt, and burning, that is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboam, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. Even all the nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Then men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them, when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, for they went and served other gods, and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, and whom he had not given unto them. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land, to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against this land, to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger, and in wrath, and in great indignation, and cast them into another land, as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us, and to our children for ever, that we may do all the words of this law. Chapter 30 and it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations, whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee, and shalt return unto the Lord thy God, and shalt obey his voice, according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart, and with all thy soul that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity, and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out unto the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart, and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. And thou shalt return, and obey the voice of the Lord, and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of thine hand, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy land, for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good, as he rejoiced over thy fathers. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law, and if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart, 
and with all thy soul. For this commandment, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shalt be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayst love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayst obey his voice, and that thou mayst cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayst dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Chapter 31 And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. And he said unto them, I am an hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. The Lord thy God, he will go over before thee and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee, as the Lord hath said. And the Lord shall do unto them as he did to Sihon, and to Og, kings of the Amorites, and unto the land of them, whom he destroyed. And the Lord shall give them up before your face, that ye may do unto them, according unto all the commandments which I have commanded you. Be strong, and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee, and he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And Moses called unto Joshua, and said unto him, in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed, and Moses wrote this law, and delivered it unto the priests, the sons of Levi, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and unto all the elders of Israel. And Moses commanded them, saying, At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, in the Feast of Tabernacles, when all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, Thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates, that they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. 
and that their children, which have not known anything, may hear, and learn to fear the Lord, as long as ye live in the land whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die. Call Joshua, and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation, that I may give them a charge. And Moses and Joshua went, and presented themselves in the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord appeared in the tabernacle, in a pillar of a cloud, and the pillar of the cloud stood over the door of the tabernacle. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up, and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whither they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles should befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us? And I will surely hide my face in that day, for all the evils which they shall have wrought in that they are turned unto other gods. Now therefore write ye this song for you, and teach it the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths, that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods, and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. And it shall come to pass, when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imagination, which they go about, even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear, for I know their imagination, which they go about, even now, before I have brought them into the land, which I swear. Moses therefore wrote this song the same day, and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua the son of Nun a charge, and said, Be strong, and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto them, and I will be with thee. And it came to pass, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book, until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law, and put it in the side of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. For I know thy rebellion, and thy stiff neck. Behold, while I am yet alive with you this day, ye have been rebellious against the Lord, and how much more after my death. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death ye will utterly corrupt yourselves, and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days, because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song, until they were ended. Chapter 32 Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb. 
and as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people, and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought thee? Hath he not made thee, and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him a desert land, and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead them, and there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kind, and milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats, with the fat of kidneys of wheat, and thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. But Jeshurun waxed fat, and kicked. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face. I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very froward generation, children in whom is no faith. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God, they have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. For a fire is kindled in my anger, and shall burn unto the lowest hell, and shall consume the earth with her increase, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. I will heap mischiefs upon them, I will spend mine arrows upon them. They shall be burnt with hunger, and devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them, with the poison of serpents of the dust. The sword without, and terror within, shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, a suckling also with the man of grey hairs. I said, I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among you. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, Our hand is high, and the Lord hath not done all this. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. How should one chase a thousand, and two put ten thousand to flight, 
except their rock had sold them, and the Lord had shut them up. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves being judges. For their vine is the vine of Sodom, and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons, and the cruel venom of asps. Is this not laid up in store with me, and sealed up among thy treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come unto them make haste. For the Lord shall judge his people, and repent himself for his servants, when he seeth that their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods? their rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices, and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you, and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and I make alive. I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For I will lift up my hand to heaven, and say, I live for ever. If I whet my glittering sword, and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to my enemies, and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land, and to his people. And Moses came and spake all the words of this song in the ears of the people, he and Joshua the son of Nun. And Moses made an end of speaking all these words of Israel, and he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do all the words of this law. For it is not a vain thing with you, because it is your life, and through this thing ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord spake unto Moses that selfsame day, saying, Get thee up into this mountain, Abiram, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab, that is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel for a possession. And die in the mount whither thou goest up, and be gathered unto thy people. As Aaron thy brother died in Mount Hor, and was gathered unto his people. Because ye trespassed against me among the children of Israel at the waters of Meribah Kadesh, in the wilderness of Zin. Because ye sanctified me not in the midst of the children of Israel. Yet thou shalt see the land before thee, but thou shalt not go thither unto the land which I give the children of Israel. Chapter 33 And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel before his death. And he said, The Lord came from Sinai, and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All the saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jeshurun, when the heads of the people and the tribes of Israel were gathered together. 
let Reuben live and not die, and let not his men be few. And this is the blessing of Judah, and he said, Hear, Lord, the voice of Judah, and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient for him, and be thou an help to him from his enemies. And of Levi he said, Let thy Thummim and thy Urim be with the Holy One, whom thou didst prove at Massa, and with whom thou didst strive at the waters of Meribah. Who said unto his father and to his mother, I have not seen him, neither he acknowledge his brethren, nor knew his own children, for they have observed thy word, and kept thy covenant. They shall teach Jacob thy judgments, and Israel by law. They shall put incense before thee, and hold burnt sacrifice upon thy altar. Bless, Lord, his substance, and accept the work of his hands, smite through the loins of them that rise against him, and of them that hate him, that they rise not again. And of Benjamin he said, The beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that coucheth beneath, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills, and for the precious things of the earth, and fullness thereof, and for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. And of Zebulun he said, Rejoice, Zebulun, in thy going out, and Issachar in thy tents. They shall call the people unto the mountain. There they shall offer sacrifices of righteousness, for they shall suck of the abundance of the seas, and of treasures hid in the sand. And of Gad he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. He dwelleth as a lion, and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. And he provided the first part for himself, because there, in a portion of the lawgiver, was he seated. And he came with the heads of the people. He executed the justice of the Lord, and his judgments with Israel. And of Dan he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. And of Naphtali he said, O oh, Naphtali, satisfied with flavor, and full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. And of Asher he said, Let Asher be blessed with his children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren, and let him dip his foot in oil. Thy shoes shall be like iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy help, and in his excellency on the sky. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, Destroy them. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone, 
the fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also his heavens shall drop down dew. Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help? And who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Chapter 34 and Moses went up from the plains of Moab unto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord shewed him all the land of Gilead unto Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, and the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I have caused thee to see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not Go over thither. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulchre unto this day, and Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and did as the Lord commanded Moses. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, in all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh, and to all his land, and in all that mighty hand, and in all the great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel. End of section 19 Section 20 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version Joshua, Chapters 1 through 10 This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Your reader, Michael Armenta Chapter 1 Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not be any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, 
as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong, and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong, and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong, and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren, armed, all the mighty men of valour, and help them. Until the Lord have given your brethren rest, as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them, then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan, toward the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so we will hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever be he that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong, and of a good courage. Chapter 2 And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went, and came into an harlot's house, named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither to-night, of the children of Israel, to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men, and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them, 
with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order upon the roof and the men pursued after them the way to jordan unto the fords and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out they shut the gate and before they were laid down she came up unto them upon the roof and she said unto the men i know that the lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you for we have heard how the lord dried up the water of the red sea for you when ye came out of egypt and what ye did unto the two kings of the amorites that were on the other side of jordan sihon and og whom ye utterly destroyed and as soon as we had heard these things our hearts did melt neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you for the lord your god he is god in heaven above and in earth beneath now therefore i pray you swear unto me by the lord since i have shewed you kindness that you will also shew kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token and that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death and the men answered her our life for yours if ye utter not this our business and it shall be when the lord hath given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee then she let them down by a cord through the window for her house was upon the town wall and she dwelt upon the wall and she said unto them get you to the mountain lest the pursuers meet you and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned and afterward may ye go your way and the men said unto her we will be blameless of this thine oath which thou hast made us swear behold when we come into the land thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee and it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house and into the street his blood shall be upon his head and we will be guiltless and whosoever shall be with thee in the house his blood shall be on our head if any hand be upon him and if thou utter this our business then we will be quit of thine oath which thou hast made us to swear and she said according unto your words so be it and she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window and they went and came unto the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned and the pursuers sought them throughout all the way but found them not so the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to joshua the son of nun and told him all things that befell them and they said unto joshua truly the lord hath delivered into our hands all the land for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us chapter three and joshua arose early in the morning and they removed from shittim and came to jordan he and all the children of israel and lodged there before they passed over and it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying when ye see the ark of the covenant of the lord your god and the priests the levites bearing it then ye shall remove from your place and go after it yet there shall be a space between you and it about two thousand cubits by measure 
come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for to-morrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a an heap. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city, Adam, that is beside Zeratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and all the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground, until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Chapter 4 And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take you up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenants of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel for ever. And the children of Israel did so, as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan as the Lord spake unto Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. 
and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. For the priests which bear the Ark stood in the midst of Jordan, until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And the people hasted and passed over. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over, that the Ark of the Lord passed over, and the priests in the presence of the people, and the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh, passed over armed before the children of Israel, as Moses spake unto them. About forty thousand prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him, as they feared Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony, that they come up out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, that the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place, and flowed over all his banks, as they did before. And the people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and encamped at Gilgal, in the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of Jordan did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, when your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then ye shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land, for the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you, until ye were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us, until we were gone over that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God for ever. Chapter 5 And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel, until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make thee sharp knives, and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives, and circumcised the children at the hill of four skins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt, that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now, all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, them they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which were came out of Egypt, were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord sware that he would not shew them the land, which the Lord sware unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, 
them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp, till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn, in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and, behold, there stood a man over against him, with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him, and said unto him, Art thou for us, or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth, and did worship, and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. Chapter 6 Now Jericho was straitly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass, that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests, and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests, bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns, passed on before the Lord, and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets, and the re-reward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout. Then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, 
going about it once. And they came into the camp, and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord, and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually, and blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went on before them, but the re reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And on the second day they compassed the city once, and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day, and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any wise keep yourself from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew with their trumpets, and it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him. And they took the city, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old and ox, and sheep, and ass, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, and bring out thence the woman, and all that she hath, as ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, and brought out Rahab, and her father, and her mother, and her brethren, and all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire, and all that was therein, only the silver, and the gold, and the vessels of brass and of iron, they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that she had, and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that riseth up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was noised throughout all the country. Chapter 7 But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing, for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is besides beth -Haven, on the east of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. 
and the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua, and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai, and the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down, wherefore the hearts of the people melted, and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes, and fell to the earth upon his face, before the ark of the Lord, until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan, to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we had been content, and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say, when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall environ us round, and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against to-morrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning, and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites. And he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zadai was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done, hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua, and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them, and took them. 
and behold they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it so joshua sent messengers and they ran into the tent and behold it was hid in his tent and the silver under it and they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto joshua and unto all the children of israel and laid them out before the lord and joshua and all israel with him took achan the son of zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. Chapter 8 And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou didst unto Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof, and the cattle thereof, shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose, and all the people of war, to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose out thirty thousand mighty men of valor, and sent them away by night. And he commanded them, saying, Behold, ye shall lie in wait against the city, even behind the city. Go not very far from the city, but be ye all ready, and I and all the people that are with me will approach unto the city. And it shall come to pass, when they come out against us, as at the first, that we will flee before them, for they will come out after us, till we have drawn them from the city, for they will say, They flee before us as at the first. Therefore we will flee before them. Then ye shall rise up from the ambush, and seize upon the city. For the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. And it shall be, when ye have taken the city, that ye shall set the city on fire, according to the commandment of the Lord shall ye do. See, I have commanded you, Joshua therefore sent them forth, and they went to lie in ambush, and abode between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and numbered the people, and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people to Ai. And all the people even the people of war that were with him went up, and drew nigh, and came before the city, and pitched on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between them and Ai. And he took about five thousand men, and set them to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of the city. And when they had set the people even all the host that was on the north of the city, and all their liars in wait on the west of the city, 
Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. And it came to pass, when the king of Ai saw it, that they hasted and rose up early, and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people, at a time appointed, before the plain. But he wist not that there were liars in ambush against him behind the city. And Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them, and fled by the way of the wilderness. And all the people that were in Ai were called together to pursue after them. And they pursued after Joshua, and were drawn away from the city. And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not out after Israel. And they left the city open, and pursued after Israel. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Stretch out the spear that is in thy hand toward Ai, for I will give it into thine hand. And Joshua stretched out the spear that he had in his hand toward the city, and the ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand, and they entered the city and took it, and hasted and set the city on fire. And when the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and, behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to flee this way or that way. And the people that fled to the wilderness turned back upon the pursuers. And when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, then they turned again and slew the men of Ai. And the other issued out of the city against them. So they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them, so that they let none of them remain or escape. And the king of Ai they took alive, and brought him to Joshua. And it came to pass, when Israel had made an end of slaying all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness, wherein they chased them. And when they were all fallen on the edge of the sword, until they were consumed, that all the Israelites returned unto Ai, and smote it with the edge of the sword. And so it was that all that fell that day, both of men and women, were twelve thousand, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua drew not his hand back, wherewith he stretched out the spear, until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for a prey unto themselves, according unto the word of the Lord, which he commanded Joshua. And Joshua burnt Ai, and made it an heap for ever, even a desolation unto this day. And the king of Ai, he hanged on a tree until eventide. And as soon as the sun was down, Joshua commanded that they should take his carcass down from the tree, and cast it at the entering of the gate of the city, and raise thereon a great heap of stones, that remaineth unto this day. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel, in Mount Ebal. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, over which no man hath lift up any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord, and sacrificed peace offerings. And he wrote there upon the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. And all Israel 
and all their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side the ark and on that side before the priests the levites which bear the ark of the covenant of the lord as well the stranger as he that was born among them half of them over against mount gerizim and half of them over against mount ebal as moses the servant of the lord had commanded before that they should bless the people of israel and afterward he read all the words of the law the blessings and the cursings according to all that is written in the book of the law there was not a word of all that moses commanded which joshua read not before all the congregation of israel with the women and the little ones and the strangers that were conversant among them chapter nine and it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side jordan in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea over against lebanon the hittite and the amorite the canaanite the perizzite the hivite and the jebusite heard thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with joshua and with israel with one accord and when the inhabitants of gibeon heard what joshua had done unto jericho and to ai they did work wilily and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up and old shoes and clouted upon their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provision was dry and mouldy and they went to joshua unto the camp at gilgal and said unto him and to the men of israel we be come from a far country now therefore make ye a league with us and the men of israel said unto the hivites peradventure ye dwell among us and how shall we make a league with you and they said unto joshua we are thy servants and joshua said unto them who are ye and from whence come ye and they said unto him from a very far country thy servants are come because of the name of the lord thy god for we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the amorites that were beyond jordan to sihon king of heshbon and to og king of bashan which was at ashtaroth wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us saying take victuals with you for the journey and go to meet them and say unto them we are your servants therefore now make ye a league with us this our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you but now behold it is dry and it is mouldy and these bottles of wine which we filled were new and behold they be rent and these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey and the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the lord and joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live and the princes of the congregation swear unto them and it came to pass at the end of three days after they had made a league with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they dwelt among them and the children of israel journeyed and came unto their cities on the third day now their cities were gibeon and chephira and beeroth and kerjath jearim and the children of israel smote them not because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the lord god of israel and all the congregation murmured 
against the princes. But all the princes said unto all the congregation, We have sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath which we swear unto them. And the princes said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood, and drawers of water unto all the congregation, as the princes had promised them. And Joshua called for them, and he spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have ye beguiled us, saying, We are very far from you, when ye dwell among us? Now therefore ye are cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bondmen, and hewers of wood, and drawers of water, for the house of my God. And they answered Joshua, and said, because it was certainly told to thy servants how that the Lord thy God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid of our lives because of you, and have done this thing. And now, behold, we are in thine hand, as it seemeth good and right unto thee to do unto us, do. And so did he unto them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, that they slew them not. And Joshua made them that day hewers of wood, and drawers of water, for the congregation, and for the altar of the Lord, even unto this day, in the place where he should choose. Chapter 10 now it came to pass, when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken Ai, and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel, and were among them, that they feared greatly, because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men thereof were mighty. Wherefore Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, sent unto Hoham, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Jephiah, king of Lachish, and unto Debir, king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me, and help me, that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua, and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together, and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon, and made war against it. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly, and save us, and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thine hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly, and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord discomfited them before Israel, and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to beth Horon, and smote them in Azekah, and unto Machida. And it came to pass, as they fled from before Israel, and were in the going down to beth Horon, 
that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven, upon them unto Azekah, and they died. There were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou, moon, in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. And Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, unto the camp to Gilgal. But these five kings fled, and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda. And it was told Joshua, saying, the five kings are found hid in a cave at Makeda. And Joshua said, Roll great stones upon the mouth of the cave, and set men by it for to keep them. And say ye not, but pursue after your enemies, and smite the hindmost of them. Suffer them not to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God hath delivered them into your hand. And it came to pass, when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of slaying them of the very great slaughter, till they were consumed, that the rest which remained of them entered into fenced cities. And all the people returned to the camp, to Joshua at Makeda, in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so, and brought forth those five kings unto him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass, when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel, and said unto the captains of the men of war, which went with him, Come near, put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And when they came near, and put their feet upon the necks of them, and Joshua said unto them, Fear not nor be dismayed. Be strong, and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. And afterward Joshua smote them, and slew them, and hanged them on five trees, and they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. And it came to pass at the time of the going down of the sun, that Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees, and cast them into the cave wherein they had been hid, and laid great stones in the cave's mouth, which remain until this very day. At that day Joshua took Makeda and smote it with the edge of the sword, and the king thereof he utterly destroyed them and all the souls that were therein, he let none remain, and he did to the king of Makeda as he did unto the king of Jericho. Then Joshua passed from Makeda, and all Israel with him, unto Libna, and fought against Libna. And the Lord delivered it also, and the king thereof, into the hand of Israel. And he smote it with the edge of the sword, 
and all the souls that were therein he let none remain in it but did unto the king thereof as he did unto the king of jericho and joshua passed from libna and all israel with him unto lachish and encamped against it and fought against it and the lord delivered lachish into the hand of israel which took it on the second day and smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that were therein according to all that he had done to libna then horam king of gezer came up to help lachish and joshua smote him and his people until he had left him none remaining and from lachish joshua passed on to eglon and all israel with him and they encamped against it and fought against it and they took it on that day and smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls that were therein he utterly destroyed that day according to all that he had done to lachish and joshua went up from eglon and all israel with him unto hebron and they fought against it and they took it and smote it with the edge of the sword and the king thereof and all the cities thereof and all the souls that were therein he left none remaining according to all that he had done to eglon but destroyed it utterly and all the souls that were therein and joshua returned and all israel with him to deber and fought against it and he took it and the king thereof and all the cities thereof and they smote them with the edge of the sword and utterly destroyed all the souls that were therein he left none remaining as he had done to hebron so he did to deber and to the king thereof as he had done also to libna and to her king so joshua smote all the country of the hills and of the south and of the vale and of the springs and all their kings he left none remaining but utterly destroyed all that breathed as the lord god of israel commanded and joshua smote them from kadesh barnea even unto gaza and all the country of goshen even unto gibeon and all those kings and their land did joshua take at one time because the lord god of israel fought for israel and joshua returned and all israel with him unto the camp to gilgal end of section twenty